for me. It was crazy. On Sunday, it wouldn't work, but All whatever. Right. All right, we're going live now. So let's see if we are live. Let's see. Can you confirm it from your end too, if you can? And uh, for at the, what, what? It says eight twenty six. Okay, we're gonna have to wait, I guess then. Or maybe I am live. Let's, oh, I am live. All right. Yeah, you're you're live. I see you. I see the link and everything on YouTube. Okay. Live. Um, let's see. All right, everyone. Uh, welcome to this live session. We got Keftech. We got Eddie. Uh, and we got GD, we got some members, and we got a uh, um, uh, YouTube community member who is Skeftech. And let's get on with our training today. So what are we going to discuss today, basically, is this right here. Let's just go ahead. Is, can everybody see my screen? Eddie, can you see my screen? Everybody we see you. Go? Okay, we see you. So first of all, I want to say, uh, you know, hi to everybody who's live right now. This is going to be a live session. This may... Uh, be a, a, a good session or it may not be a good session. It doesn't matter. We are live today and we're going to talk to each other. We're just going to be together talking and kind of like, you know, uh, tackling one of the skills requirement that you will see on your job description. So what is this that we're going to talk about today is basically software installation, basic software installation and deployment skills for who? Who are we going to basically target today is the entry level IT professional. Now, if anybody wants to join this session, it's in the community. The Zoom link is in the community. You can go to the Zoom, uh, the community, and just go in there and click on that Zoom link. It's going to get you an email and uh, and join us, and you can ask us questions directly. So, hey, Ron, how are you? So, who who are the people? I'm talking about entry level IT professional. People want to get into IT, so then they can see the things ahead of the time, and uh, you know. The, the people like enthusiasts or people may be a business owners, right? Now, a lot of people have also have some IT stuff going on, right, for themselves. And then they may have certain people working somewhere else. But of course, this is not targeted towards like a like a normal business owner. Like, you know, ah, let me just, just deploy some software stuff right here. This is specifically for, uh, you know, entry-level IT professionals. Why? Why are we doing this session, first of all? Now, specifically, this session is about because I missed this session in my last batch and this is something that uh my usually my live members pay for this session and then they they basically kind of spend the whole hour with me and we kind of do this very quickly but today i'm going to go in a pretty much more detail i will probably cover a little bit more than that and when i say live members i also have live members actually in this live session eddie and gigi they are actually joined and maybe some other one will join as well um so here we have that um and then of course um uh why do we need this? First of all, to gain some skills, gain confidence, and of course, for interview. And I'll show you exactly what I mean by this, why we have to touch on this area, because it's very important. A lot of people does ask about this stuff. What is the requirement? Basic 80 skills, active directory skills. The reason for that is that you don't do deployments in a work group environment. It's very rare. Yeah, you may do it in a lab environment and stuff like that. But when you're working in a company and there's somebody will hire you to become like a deployment specialist, they're not going to hire you based on like, you know, uh, um, you know, like, let's say, for example, um, that you need to, they're not going to give you like, let's say $90,000 just to go and, and deploy like uh, a Zoom to five la uh, laptops in the, in the lab. They're going to pay you $90,000, $100,000 for you to deploy it to like, let's say 5,000 machines or something like that. Or you may become a sysadmin or you may become a technical, uh, like, you know, level two engineer, level three engineer, and you may be doing a lot of deployments. Now, we're not going to touch that level of deployment, but of course, we need to touch something so that it can give you a better approach when you go to the interviews. Okay. So welcome to all other new members, uh, Blank, Blanca and Jerry. Uh, welcome. Um, so. Uh, okay, and who are the other community that is going to get help from this session is the live, of course, the YouTube community. Like I said, com the YouTube community videos and the, the, the site membership videos has no difference is that the site has more labs and more involvement and the YouTube community is kind of like where we have kept tech and those type of videos are extremely powerful because that kind of adds on to our skills and I'll show you at the end and there's a link that we are collaborating with each other and I'm putting his uh, you know videos on that link too so uh, please remind me at the end guys so if I forget it I want to share that link so that people can take benefit from it welcome Alex welcome uh, Ron uh, uh, okay 
So before we get started, let me just take you why it is so important. And now, okay, I, I want to talk about one more thing. Uh, in a requirement, I also will request people who are brand new to our YouTube community. You know, we have specific type of members that follow us, subscribers. They want to be an IT professionals, right? So we don't jump into products. We don't jump into something like, let me show you how cool this is to deploy a Zoom to 10 machines. We don't do that. We have to explain things ahead. So if you're one of those type of people who doesn't like this kind of approach, please make sure you forward our video to the point where you see labs. If you still don't like it, this means we're not up to your standard. I would not recommend this channel to uh, some of the people that may get, you know, impatient and they they feel like you know <laughs> they feel like you just you just wasted 15 minutes of my life, you know. This 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 is I mean, uh, think about it. There's there's 40,000 and different type of members that are following us right now just to learn this stuff to become better at technology or do something or with their resume and stuff like that. Just wanted to give you this warning because I know I saw, I, 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 I kind of get a lot of cuss words uh, from YouTube sometimes, you know, hey, you know, you wasted my life or something. Sajid, welcome, bro. Um, it's in the community. I think you already, you already registered. It should be in, in your email. Uh, okay, yeah, got it, you got it. Okay, so now let's go ahead and let me show you what I'm talking about here. So, uh, Let's see, let's confirm it. Can you guys see my screen? Yep. Okay. So if you look at it, this description's right here. Look how much, if I just type deployment with the help desk, if I just type deployment with sysadmin, if I type as deployment, anything deployment with IT careers, just look what they're asking for. Look at this. Use deployment tools to install and manage software drivers i mean they, they just put bios and stuff like i don't know who would who would, who would actually manage bios with software deployment it's kind of crazy though okay sometimes they do put stuff like that but look at this every single title that you see now on the left side has to do something with a level one land technician uh, help desk technician desktop support technician and stuff like that so you know deployment is a skill that you need right now why? Because look at these description. So I get a lot of people that come to me and say, hey, Danish, uh, I am basically, you know, um, going for a job, but I just came from A plus kind of stuff. So A plus doesn't teach you this stuff. So then they come over here. They already missed like about three different things right here. Like they will, they will not know about Active Directory much. They're not going to know about deployment. And then of course, some other people will put imaging in there. Some other people will put like some other things in there. So they already miss five or six very critical skills and that discourages them. So even this responsibility discourages people, uh, let alone when people see something like where they see years of experience. And we already tackled this. To tackle this, what do you need? You gotta know these things, right? What is experience? Why am I saying that, okay, if I have 13 years of experience in IT, 13 plus or less, whatever it is, what makes me say that? Because I know these terms, because I know about imaging, because I know about deployments, because I know about stuff like that make, gives me confidence. That's the only difference because I am used to these type of tools that I can go out and talk about it. A new person doesn't know about these things so that they only think about the experience can be only achieved by you actually going to the business and staying in there and then achieving that goal, which is exactly, yes, it is. That's how it is. That's natural but you can make it more better for yourself because at the end, what are we doing in interviews? We have to sell ourselves, right? You're in the competition with other people who already have experience and then you're in the competition with people who don't have experience. So you got to do something different than the people who don't have experience. Simple as that. And you got to do something different than a person who has experience, but of course you got to beat him, beat them with more, uh, you know, like, you know, with your attitude, with the customer service type of skills and all that kind of stuff. So, that's why I wanted to show you this, that it's important. Now, the second thing is, of course, this is just you getting in. You're just opening the door and you, you got stuck right there, right? Now, the other thing is that you landed a job, then you require, you're required to know these skills. So I'm gonna go to the page two right now. So you need to know about these skills. So let's go ahead, let me share this page two. So, um, and I will start asking some of the questions. So if you look at this page too right now, look at this. This is a direct email. Direct email is what? Somebody sends you an email. They want what? They want this mic, mic text, whatever that is. I don't even know what that software is. So they, they want this software installed on their machines and they need what? I need the software to do my job, right? So if somebody does send you an email like that, 
what do you need to do? You need to know, know now how to go to their, the person office and you need to actually install their software. Normal, right? Basic installation skills. So if you didn't know that, let me tell you that I can ask Keptech. He's also in this career. Keptech, how many times do we get emails from people that I need this software or that software or this software? What do you, what's your experience on this? Oh man, it's a lot. Of, it's too many, it's too many emails and too many requests. It's, just, it's, a, it's because they don't have admin rights. So you have to install it for them. That's the point right there. You see, when he says that you, of course, let me tell you, there's a lot of technical people out there and, and installing a software is a piece of cake for a lot of people. They have done it on their home machines, but they don't have rights. So you got to do that job. But then of course, when they don't have rights, of what's what's the main thing what we are, we are touching right now? We're, we're mainly talking about corporate world, business world. What do they use? Active Directory. So if you didn't know how to use your, you know, uh, your uh, NetBio slash your username and password, you will look extremely dumb if you go there and you try to install you try to install that software and it's, it, let's say it doesn't work, and you're like, what the hell is going on over here? And then somebody else call you, hey, I think you should put it this way in this specific way, right, Kev? And then you install that software. So if he, you see, even though such a small thing. For someone who is experienced, they may just start, start laughing like, okay, what is this? This is like nothing. But for someone who's brand new, they don't know these things. So what do they need to know even before this? What did I put a requirement? Why did I say Active Directory is a requirement, which we already did that with CapTech and other people in our live sessions. We, we installed Active Directory too. And he has a bunch of videos about Active Directory too. So you need to know that skill even to do just a basic job like this. So just, does, that, does that give everybody a, a little sense of what we're trying to achieve today, right? Yeah. Okay. So Steven, the, the link is in the description. If you go to the YouTube community, it's a Zoom link. You're going to click on it and you're going to get the registration in your email and just join in today. Okay. Okay. We got, we got a Sajib too. Sajib is also, so Sajib is kind of like the member who missed this session. So that's why we're doing this whole thing now uh, online. So if you look at the bottom right now, uh, the people who I think you guys, there are some people that have already did my training. The first one is a direct email. What is the bottom one? What does the bottom one represent? The body? What is that? Come on, you can't you can't miss with that. What that isn't that the ticket? Perfect, perfect. That's a ticketing system. And so we are getting calls from directly from people uh, on the phone. We pick up a phone. I need that software. So now you're in a reactive mode, right? You either need to remote in. So you see another skill got touched right there. So you need to remote into the machine to do their job for them. You need to do probably SCCM because you wanna see their screen, right? There are certain uh, tools that, you, uh, like if you do RDP, uh, most of the time you will kick them off and you will log in as you, right? And, but you then use these other tools, like, you know, what, what do you guys use, uh, Keptech? I think you show, so, uh, show that day, like it was what? Um, Bombguard, something like that? Yeah, so we, we, we use, uh, we get on people's machines, we use, we use Bombguard as our yeah. screen share. And, and a lot of people use SCCM, some people use, you know, Iterian, some people use this MSP type of software, just a bunch of softwares out there. So in this case, of course, you need to know that kind of skills, but of course you can also walk down to their, their office, which we're gonna talk about some of the, some of the things that are actually not IT, it's just personal, like, you know, personal customer service type of skills that I'm gonna talk about, uh, about when we hit the deployment side of this section. So you see the bottom one is what's a basic ticket. It says what, normal urgency is not, uh, too urgent, but I need Microsoft team downloaded and configured to, to, you know, uh, to workstation. So simply you could have gone to the machine, you could have deployed it. It's, it's going to be something that we're going to talk about. Um, so let's go to page three. So that was the basic skills that we're going to talk about in the beginning. And when we start the lab right now, but look at the map, look at where we're going to go. What is our, uh, what is our goal today? So today, if you're a brand new IT person, right? Um, I tell you my, my own example. One day, like I, I give this example that how I learned these things and why am I teaching about this kind of stuff is that one day uh, a IT director came to us and say that, you know, to me, I mean, I was the only one man IT person on that, that, okay, we need to change from XP to Windows 7 and we're getting this Friday, the shipment is about 60 computer for the labs and you need to do this by Monday because Monday there's a class starting. And I didn't know how to do images. I didn't know how to do deployments at that time. So one installation took me 40 minutes at that, that time. There was no SSDs, remember? That's how much it took, right? 40 minutes. You install the computer like 35 minutes. And then, of course, the configuration will take you another four, like almost like a 41 hour, right? So now think about it. 60 multiplied by 45 minutes. And I went that day and I dropped like that on my bed. Like, you know, I'm, I'm like breathing and I'm like dying. I'm breathing and I'm dying. I'm like, 
this cannot be an IT job like this. I, I, can't, I cannot believe people can do this kind of job. I was like, man, this is crazy. So then of course I learned about these skills. Okay, I found them images. Then because I found images, I'm like, there gotta be a way to do, you know, after my images, I gotta make a package of these five or six softwares that I'm putting on these machines. I gotta make a package out of it, right? I don't wanna be sitting there and doing this. So once I do image, maybe I'll just deploy it. And I did that. And I was the happiest person on earth, right? I'm sitting from my office and I just dropped, deployed it on Friday. And I told the work that I'm, hey, it's gonna be done on a, on a Sunday night, okay? And it was done like in 30 minutes, but I was, I was going on Saturday, Sunday, eating my chocolates and I'm drinking my tea. Everything was done because I was like having fun over there, right? So this is exactly what we're talking about today. So, okay, so our IT lets you make a request right into the ticketing system too. There you go. I mean, like I said, we're gonna talk about different types of deployment. So right now this is a mass deployment. What, is, what does this represent by the way? Hello all, we are starting to deploy a Cisco AMP client to all desktops. And of course, after that, you have to do something more on that. Of course, depending on what kind of scenario you are in, it could be you deploying a very critical security uh, patch for all the Zoom that just came out, right? So, so many people are using Zoom on their desktops now and at, at work everywhere, right? And they're like, okay, Zoom has an issue with the security. So what happened then? Well, Zoom started to patch systems. So it could do automatically, but you may not be, this may not be allowed to do it automatically. So you gotta do it, what? You, you as a technical person needs to do what now? If your CEO comes to you right now that we got an issue right here, we got a technical, we got a very critical thing going on. It gotta be done immediately. So what would you do? If you're working in an environment where they have 600 desktops and let's say six floors of building, I'm sure if you didn't know these skills, the CEO doesn't care if it's deployment or if you do, you do it, you got to do it. It is that simple, right? Right, Kev? You got to do it. You got to do it simply. Okay, it, just, it takes you what? I don't care. You're an IT person, come up with a solution, but you got to do it, right? <laughs> but some places, of course, are not designed like that. Some places have tiers. So for example, I think Sajib is online today with us. Sajib, I don't know if you're on, you can come on mic, but you- I'm here. Yeah, so, okay, great. But you get a request from, you work for government, right? Yes. Okay, but you you, go, you get some type of request, you get images pre-built and stuff like that, and you have to request for certain things like that, right? Yeah. So you can see certain areas don't allow you to do these kind of things. So that, but that's fine. That doesn't mean you should not learn it because if you learn it, of course, if they don't give you opportunity, because our one of our main thing in this uh, jobs could share and cap tech channels are what we are training you to become a proper IT professional. So tomorrow you're not relying on just one company. You become so good at your stuff that you can go anywhere and you feel like you're comfortable, right? So when you learn these skills, then you're gonna say what to yourself that if they're not giving me those opportunities, I'm gonna go find a different job, and I'm gonna turn this job from 45k to 60k because I know these skills. That's how it is. This is how normal IT people work when they want to make money and they want to do a job that they like. Okay. If somebody tells me that you are not allowed to do these things for next six months and I'm trying my try, I'm like, why am I doing this manually, by the way? Because it's our policies. Is there a better options for, with you guys? Are you going to implement something? If a manager doesn't let you do these things. So of course, this team around you is a little bit of like a, a little negative side of it, right? There's, there's a little negativity around it because they don't want to let you do things. They don't want to let you grow. And even if they don't give you opportunity to go to another team, then you know you're going to be stuck for a, a pretty good time. And that's an issue. That's an issue that we, are, we have discussed many, many times. We're not, we're not going to mess our session for that, but you know that there's an issue. You just need to move on then, okay? So, okay, now here, uh, this is what, another thing right here. So now that's mass deployment. So what about this one? What is the self-service portal? Does anybody know this? When it comes to application, what is self-service portal? Does it does it ring a bell to anybody? Anybody worked on these kind of things? Is this uh, where you set up a little, like a web page or something, and they can they can uh, do things themselves, like they can download exactly. That's exactly what it, that's exactly what it means. You approve a software and you put it on the portal, so then then when when a user clicks on it, they don't need to call, call you for installation. It works. It works without you getting giving them. Uh, like going there to their machines and putting the HQ, whatever, all that kind of stuff, it works immediately. It installs for them because you have given that permission and the account that works behind it is actually an admin account. So that's very controlled type of areas. And there are many, many organizations that use this type of uh, procedure and we're gonna do that. So, so far, 
and people on the YouTube right now, is everything clear to you guys what I'm trying to achieve? You're going to achieve three goals today. One is to do a basic deployments, to use a tool that a lot of people use. And why we use this tool, why we choose these tools has a reason behind it. And we're going to do three methods today. The first one is actually three methods of deployment, but the first one is just basic installation. Like I cannot jump into deployment if you don't know how to install a software. That's just totally crazy, right? People are not going to take that, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> so bear with me. People who already know this stuff, please bear with me. This is for a lot of people that are brand new and they also want to learn and get to your point, okay? So let's get started. And uh, okay, so so far, any other questions? Anyone, anyone uh, Jerry, anybody, uh, you guys can actually uh, talk in the middle too. It will give me a little space to breathe too. So uh, you guys can definitely take over. So this is like, this is a, remember, this is not my, one of my typical live training where I'm like, <laughs> All right, so, okay. What's up everybody, what's up on YouTube? Okay, so let me go ahead and share uh, my other screen. Let's sh stop sharing this one. So let me know when you guys see my, my screen right now for the lab and what we are gonna have to achieve from this lab. So can, can you guys see my VMware lab? Yeah, we see it. Perfect. Yeah. Okay, so as I mentioned that the requirement for this session is that yes, you do need to know about Active Directory a little bit. So I already configured a domain controller. We don't need to put a massive labs or anything. And another one is a server 2019 server, which is a basic installation and is joined to that Active Directory. And then we got this nice user, her name is Stacy. So by the way, I don't have no affiliation with Stacy names or anything. It's just that I choose like a Stacy, something very common. So I just picked Stacy, okay? Nothing, nothing against Stacy. Because we're gonna we're gonna get mad at Stacy too at some point. All right, so so here's the, here's the, our scenario right here. The first scenario is that let's go ahead and open this machine for Stacy, and let's just log in as her. That's like normal way Stacy's logging in, and she's gonna put her password. You already know about all this stuff, so of course we're not gonna go over not, none of that stuff today. Okay, so Stacy logs in, and of course, Stacy is using some team stuff and everything. But now, Stacy uh, is kind of like an employee right now. So, this is where I wanted to talk about a little bit of basic installation. So, let's say Stacy call you, and Stacy's requesting for an application called FileZilla for because she said that she's working with a graphic vendors outside of our company, and that vendor needs to deploy a sorry, a put up product or something that that I need the software for. So whatever her reason is. So what are some ways, first of all, without touching deployment tool, let's say people are not allowing you to do that. What are some of the ways you can install a, a, a FileZilla for Stacy? Anybody? You can physically go to her office if you have access to it and install it. Let's make it physical first. Let's not make it remote or anything right now because in the beginning, that's what we want to learn as a new technician, right? So you're gonna come over here and you're gonna do what to get the FileZilla? I do a Google search for it. Yeah. Okay, perfect. You're gonna do Keep Google search. Very basic, right? Extremely basic stuff. You're gonna go online. You're gonna to go to the web browser. You're gonna open it up and you're gonna to go to Google. And because if we don't go through this way, then you are not gonna realize the pain, right? So we have to first touch the pain first, right? So we go here and we basically come on here. Stay. <laughs> I'm looking at chat too. All right, so <laughs> FileZilla and you're gonna do download, right? So here's the thing. When you are downloading, how do you know? Now this is another thing, right? When, when it comes to software, what do you need to know about downloading a FileZilla over here? Version type. Ah, perfect. There you go. So yep. um, version type, you need, you cannot just go blindly download 32 bit on a 64 bit system, right? So uh, you need to understand now, what, what do you need to understand over here? This, uh, so you see, I'm going to touch, I'm going to do a touch points. Yeah. So what do you need to understand over here? Operating systems, right? Mm -hmm. Systems as, as a journal, like you need to understand architectures, how, how this whole thing works. So that was what, that was like way even before you touch the deployments or installation, that was what? That was a plus kind of learning, right? So you got to go back where? To one of our videos where CapTech is doing 
I'm doing, Professor Messer have a lot of videos about the radical understanding and all that stuff is already there for you. So you gotta go back. If you, if you feel like, where, where do I need to go back? Then you need to contact us then. If you're, if you're that new to our channel, then you need to contact us. Like, where do I need to, that's, that scratch that you're talking about, Danish, that first thing that you're talking about, where do I go? Then you need to contact us if you don't understand, or you can go to our site or uh, channels or go to GapTech channel. I'm sure every, you'll find his video too, the same thing. So we're gonna download 64 bit because we already know we're in 2020. I'm not gonna be putting this stuff on 32 bit systems right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and download uh, this uh, client because I'm already, I already know that I'm using what? Windows operating system. So I need to download it for Windows. So I need to download the client and I download it and boom, I got the installation going on and I save it over here. And now I basically have the application. I run it for Stacy. I put my username and password. And I let's say, I assume, let's assume that we have done the installation because of course the rest of the process is you understanding how this application works because certain applications may require you to do just next, next, next and finish. Now, certain application may require you to know a lot more than that. For example, if you have to install something for SQL Server that will connect to a SQL Server and all kind, that kind of stuff, crazy stuff, then of course, what do you need to do? You need to go where? Documentation, right? So Ben, Ben, Ben Memor, uh, can somebody send him a, it's, it's in the community section. It's in the community section, okay? It's in the community section. Go to YouTube community section. There's a link and join from there. Uh, I'm sure someone can help you in the chat too. So, um, okay. So once you have this right here, you know that you have installed this, uh, you know, this software right here, you have it right here. Now, okay, let's talk about this now. You're walking, you just, you just finish your job from Stacy and you start walking by and you're like, you got another person uh, right there. Like, you know how they sit together all the, hey, what about me? I need FileZilla 2, I need FileZilla 2, I need FileZilla 3, I need FileZilla 4, I need FileZilla 6. Right, Kev, Kev is smiling right now. He, know, he knows exactly what I'm talking about. Right, Kev? Is that, isn't that true? It's, it's, it's like, it's, it's like, um, um, it's like when, you have a, when you have a brand new toy or a brand new car, or when you have a brand new laptop, everyone wants it. <laughs> yes. It's the laptop or software, everyone wants it. There you go. So now you tell me, let's say if you don't have a deployment tool. We're not talking about deployment right now, guys. We're talking about basic installation skills right now. How can you make your life easy, by the way, now? What step can you cut out from this whole pr procedure right now? No deployment. We're not talking about scripting. We're not talking about CMD, none of that. Because you're too new right now. You're too brand new to, to CMD, to scripting. We're not even gonna touch that. Which is another very basic skill that you really need to know so you can cut down downloading a software from internet. You put the file on a USB. You put a file on a USB. There, there you go. Where basic stuff, but what's the other? What's the other IT skill that you need to? Of course, we are really gonna put that on USB. That's a that's a good good answer. But what's the other skill that you need to learn? You to could you could create a you could create a folder on the share drive and then put that file in the share drive and make sure everyone has access to that folder and they could download it from. Perfect. There. there you go. There you go. That's an exact answer. That one. Now you see now. Uh, tip point. I was I was changed my name my like what what am I calling this this is a tip point or this is a what a, what is a pro point or I don't even know what this is, but remember the first point was to go back to a plus to learn about the architecture kind of stuff too right so now you see what what's the other point right here so the people who have done my live training you should not have issues with this stuff because this was the reason I did ad first in day one and then I touched on what on day day three what did I touch before I come over here I touched about what permissions permissions you gotta understand permissions if you're working in a corporate world right now anywhere and as an IT person if you don't know permissions you're stuck almost 90% of the time you cannot even do basic stuff let alone thinking about you're going to do deployments to 10,000 machines that is totally impossible if you don't know how to do permissions right so this is where you're going to do what you're going to go to your machine right here to one of the machines right here of course and then you're going to put that in the, in the share. So I already did that because we already did this in our last training. So I'm not, the, the, when I say tip point, I'm not gonna do this in this this uh, session. There's a reason behind it because I don't wanna get stuck with something basics now. So if I go to DC 4000 slash over here, there you go, look at this. So if I have that, that six people telling me, I need this software, I need this software, I need this software, what would I do? I will copy this software and I'll put it into the, the share 
for myself. And then, of course, if that's the procedure that you're doing it for yourself, then how would you then make sure that, you know, uh, you can get this call again and again. Uh, you can get this call again and again, and again and again, right? So how would you fix that for yourself? Of course, you need to then make folders, you need to put FileZilla folder. And every time there's a new version available, you got to do that manually. So you do you understand where I'm going right now? You fix one issue, but another issue, another issue just started for you. And what is that? Keeping track of all these softwares. How do you keep track of all these softwares? This is a bunch, I mean, the world is not about that anymore today, you know? This is something that we used to do 10 years ago. Oh yeah, I'm talking about, because deployment skill was actually hard in the beginning. I remember when a big fix, I don't know if, how many people remember big fix. When big fix came to the market, that was the biggest tool in the corporate world that a lot of people were using. Big fix got bought by IBM and that's where SCCM and all these type of tools were at that time kind of like popping out from that. I mean, because of the, they, they came out with that technology, not technology, but that tool, right? So before that, we were actually, <laughs> we were making this one share for whole technician cap and there's like six, seven technicians. And we have to like, if somebody deploy a FileZilla and FileZilla is a new version, they, he has to delete the older one and he has to put the new one. So then it saves my job. It's still better than nothing, right? <laughs> but, but if you, but if you, but if you are in today's market right now and people have patch management system, this management system, that management, and you start like saying, what, what the hell are you talking about? Are you, are you, are you guys doing this kind of stuff? <laughs> so, so that's still manual, but you see how step-by-step, step-by-step you approached to something now different. So you see the doors are opening for your skill because the main point of my sessions are what? are not about products, by the way, are not about FileZilla, are not about PDQ, are not about this, this, or that, or that. My, my main focus is that you get comfortable enough to answer a question when you see something like this on these descriptions. When you see it, you know what you're doing. When you see it, I know exactly what that is. If you cannot master it, of course, I will never recommend mastering anything in IT. You can never master it anyway. Just know it. Just know it and talk about it. So that's number one goal in this whole session that I'm going to keep and I'm not going to let it go because I'm going to talk about that again and again. Okay. So you made that easy for yourself. Great job. You did it. Okay. And now you made it easy. You can walk in the same building. People can call you 10 times. You can, you don't have any issues. All you need to remember is the share now. That's it. Done. Okay. That's the basic stuff. That's a basic installation skills. Everybody knows that. How can we make the same job easier now? Let's say for example, one day you're too sick and you got like 10 calls for FileZilla again because it got, it got, everybody's, made, everybody's getting this, this message in on their machine. Uh, there's a new version available and the new version have diamonds in there. And of course, a lot of people are going to say, hey, I want the new version because it has diamonds in there, right? I'm just, that's just kind of joke. But of course, they, they would say that, oh, I, there's a new version available. There's something really cool about it. I need it like really like, like now, like, you know, please give it to me quickly. And you want to help them, but you're sick. Like you don't want anyone to go and make them sick or something. How would you solve that issue? Anybody? How would you solve this, this issue now? You don't want to go to their office. And you, you can work from home. Yeah. At home. Like you No, actually you're at work. Still you're at work. Like you're just kind of like in your office, how would you fix that issue in the third building, third floor? Like, what, would you walk in there and do the same process or do you, can you come up with the different solutions? So you would, you would do a, a silent install. You would do a silent install by using anything, right? It doesn't matter. It, whatever tool it is, right? You could use a command line. You can use PowerShell. You can use some good tools out there that are publicly available and we know about it. You can do all that kind of stuff. And of course you're going to do that kind of run a script of unattended storage. So you can do script too. But like I say, we're not going to go to scripting. Why? Because if you are so brand new to just learn about installation, how can you learn about scripting? That is just, I'd say scripting is the, the, the last thing you should be learning. First, learn about some basic tools and how to do some basic deployment so you can visually see what's going on, then come back to scripting. Okay. All right. So of course, that is what we are going to achieve from this video today, because I'm going to be showing you very different methods how deployments is done by some of the known tools. And that is the reason, that is the reason why we put on our resume. So let me move this right here. That is the reason why we put some of these tools on our resume right here. You see right in front of you, a lot of people 
that's where the uniqueness of our training comes into play and most of these skills that you're learning from CapTech and other people. So if you can use these type of tools inside your resume, you got gold right there, okay? That's where you're talking about, how do I counter experience? This is exactly how my members are countering experience. This is exactly how they're getting job with no job, no pre previous IT uh, experience, and they're getting the job. Why? Because they're talking about the tools that some of the people already know in the community. So for example, if they put Spiceworks in there, there are more than 8 million IT professionals right now on Spiceworks. So we know these tools. When, mm -hmm. when you talk to me, yeah, uh, uh, Captain, can you take over? I'm gonna, I'm gonna I have a call coming in. Just, just one thing, okay, I just want to- Yeah, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, so um, I was looking at the, at the YouTube chat and someone, someone was asking me, someone was saying in the youtube comment like remotely take over their machine i'm like yeah you could do that but um if you have sscm or if you have avanti which is what i use you could just deploy the software for multiple machines at the same time instead of remoting in one by one you don't want to do that that's too much work so you want to you want to do is you want to actually um use some sort of deployment application like avanti or sscm and then what it allows you to do is basically you could just drag all the machines into the software and then just push it out and then have, have an installation of 10 to 20 to 30 machines at the same time, instead of you doing them one by one, otherwise you'll be there till tomorrow. You don't want to do that. That's too much work. So that's the easiest way to do it. So you could just, you know, just deploy a software application. And, and that, 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 that's the reason why if you go and do help desk or IT support, a lot of these places will train you. I'm not saying that I'm not. I'm not saying that you you you're re, like get, gonna be required to learn it. You know, you're gonna learn it anyway. They're gonna train you in in in, in your job. So like, if you're doing IT support, help desk, desktop support, they will train you how to use SSCM. They will train you how to use the application. They will train you how to use Avanti. Um, my other job, I use Altiris. Altiris allows you to deploy applications as well. It's also an inventory application. Um, I, I use that as well. And, but they train you, they train you how to use it. Obviously you don't, you know, you're not gonna, they're not gonna just throw you in the fire and expect you to learn how to do it. You know, they'll train all you, they'll train you on how to do all that stuff. So, um, the best skill for tech is to have laziness. I don't know about that. Uh, we also have, uh, we also have done that night of rollouts. Yeah. Usually, usually you do like a deployment. So typically they have a deployment with SSCM Avanti. And all this other stuff that they use, all the applications, they do a deployment with with software applications or with Windows updates. Like if you have some sort of Windows update, they will deploy all the Windows updates at the same time on the computers and stuff like that. And I see Don and she's back. All right, sorry guys. Uh, I had there was something like a noise came in and they wanted to ask me like, if, are you okay? There's some, <laughs> it's like a big noise out there. Like what happened? There's nothing. <laughs> so okay, so now now there's a reason. That's that's why when we're gonna hit and touch these tools there's a reason for it because then you can use it on your resume that you have you know experience in the lab environment about these because you know when you start talking about these tools you're talking to an IT person and you're relating them to and you're like telling a person that look I'm 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 brand new to this stuff but the way I'm learning all this stuff is a little different than a person who's coming straight with A plus certification now, I talked about this many many times this techniques really really works and you know that's it's just not a tricky technique it is exactly like you're learning you're investing your time in there right Okay, so now if you come over here, this is what exactly what we're gonna do. We're gonna touch up first of all the easy tools and the, the tools that are extremely known in the market. And then later on, I'll show you maybe some of the very advanced tools that a lot of people wanna run away from. And that's probably what I'm talking about. You know, you exactly know what I'm talking about. I'm talking about SECM, right? <laughs> and I'll tell you why nobody doesn't wanna do that labs on it. Nobody you wanna, uh, you know, for specifically like for like deployment now for like a small company or even like a mid-sized company, I, I would I would be shocked if a sysadmin recommend that kind of tool for that type of companies. Maybe it's a very large environment and they have some extreme stuff going on then yeah, but for, to be honest, there are way better solutions out there in the market right now. So the first solution that we're gonna talk about is what the same example, if you wanna do, we're gonna first open a server, right? So can you guys see my lab? Uh, we see your screen yeah. and we see the machine. Yep. Okay. You see the screen and the machine. Okay. So we are in the same situation right now and we are going to basically install uh, the product called is PDQ. PDQ is a well-known 
uh, you know, product in the market. I'm not getting paid by them. They don't even know about me or I'm doing all this training on them. Sorry, they should start paying me, to be honest. Every single training, I kind of like talk about PDQ. PDQ. And if they're like watching me, they, they should start paying us. And I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to send them this video right now. Like, hey, after this, I'm like, yeah, you guys, you guys just stop paying me. <laughs> all right. So here you go. Somebody's just put that never reinvent the wheel, right? So of course, when there is a nice product out there and, and specifically when you're learning, you want to make something easy for yourself first. So that's why I don't recommend scripting right from the start because then you need to learn about scripting first to get into this kind of stuff. So then this becomes pretty tricky for you, okay? A lot of people just can't either do a give up in the beginning that, you know, that's just too much for them. So visually, I'm going to show you a very basic examples of how a tool can be installed and how a product can be deployed. And these tools are not some tiny mini tools. They have enterprise versions of this and all that kind of stuff. And we do a lot of advanced stuff by using PDQ. And I'll show you some examples uh, now. So let's go ahead and log in to our server. So when you go to the server, the first thing you should do is to install the tool in your lab environment. If you're doing that, it's very simple installation. We're going to go to the website. And we're going to type PDQ, uh, you know, just I don't recommend. I, I do everything bad stuff. Like I will not recommend any security. I turn off all the firewalls, everything like that. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and, okay, there you go. So when in the server, if you're doing some training in your labs or something like that, of course, servers are more secure. How can you stop this uh, pop-ups to come up uh, for you? So you're going to go to the server manager like that. And you're gonna click on server, uh, local server, and you need to make sure that you turn off the IE security configuration. So once you do that, then of course, after that, you need to re restart your IE and then uh, you know, go do the same process and everything should be good to go. If you're doing this in the lab, please don't do that in a real environment. Don't get to their domain controllers and turn off these securities. You're gonna get fired. I can guarantee you that. Okay, so <laughs> Kevin's laughing like, yes, exactly yeah, what's gonna happen. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and go to Google and we're gonna download this product, uh, PDQ Deploy. And I will explain in what scenario this would be a really nice uh, solution. First of all, for learning purposes, because you wanna learn about deployments. And second, if you are gonna use it, then how can you actually utilize it? So if you're gonna go to the PDQ Deploy, just click on PDQ Deploy. They offer two products. One is the inventory product and one is PDQ. So in my live training, I already did the inventory in my last, uh, video people for who are watching me live, they can go to my channel and they can find a Spiceworks inventory out. I talked about that as well. So we're going to download this. Uh, Sunkit, I'm learning a lot. Thank you. And uh, we're going to come ahead and download and save this product right here. And save it into download and we are going to run it. And I will start hitting the points of where you need to understand some of the areas of the requirement like Active Directory. And we'll just uh, get to that more practical example now. So once this is done, let it do a scan and all that kind of stuff. And now we're going to open that folder. I'm going to right click on the deploy and run it as administrator. So when you do that, we're going to run it. And you can see why I choose to use a domain connected environment is for this specific reason. Let's pretend that I read all this stuff, okay? I, let's, I read it, I pretend. And then I'm gonna click next, and I'm gonna click next now. And I'm gonna click install. So when it's installed, after that, what it will do, it will look for your domain. Already, it's gonna say that, okay, you're a part of this specific domain. Because you're an admin, you just need to put your password for it to work. Now, if you were to do the same lab in a work group environment, what do you need to do then? You need to make sure that you put your computer name first slash your admin username and password. So let me show you to you. So if you click on next here, you see you're gonna pick the free mode. We're gonna have to do the free mode because it's, it gives you a lot. So look at this right here. What is it right here? It says domain. It already picked my domain right there. How do I find my domain by the way? Does anybody know? So we go to... Uh... Sys, I mean, uh, right click, start, go to system, and then scroll down, it should say it. You could just go to uh, CMD and go to uh, my. Check this out, okay? Um, Eddie, this is something good. Um, so what you're going to do, who am I? Mm -hmm. Can there be a better command than this? Uh, uh, who am I slash. Who am I? Slash. 
It's uh, this slash or this slash? The first slash. The first one. Okay, let's start the first one. F Q D N, right? Yeah. There you go. So it tells you exactly what container user um, right here, the domain, uh, NetBIOS, and all that kind of stuff is going to be there, right? So it exactly picked that information right there for you, DK, right there. This is your domain controller address, and this is the full address, FQDN, and it's going to put it right there. But of course, it doesn't put the, the machine name on top of it, right? That's going to be the full address of the machine with the domain, right? So it doesn't do that. It's just going to give you exactly the domain name right here. And you can also go to your Active Directory, expand your Active Directory, and uh, there you go. You're going to see the same information, right? That's that's mm -hmm. what mostly most of us are used to that also. And go to there and you're going to, you're going to if you want to uh, find out that how do you put this DK and all that kind of stuff, you're going to right click on Active Directory, inside Active Directory, and you're just going to find the NetBIOS oh, information. Right. In there. That's just a little bit more technical for people who get stuck if their NetBIOS is extremely weird, like, you know, they put, people put stuff in there, right? We're going to put password right now and move on I will finish this somebody says is that Linux <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna answer that <laughs> uh, I'm not is that a joke or that's a, that's a real question okay so there you go we got in we have installed that uh, you know, almost uh, connected it and it's basically going to go out there and open up PDQ for us. And this is where when I talk to you guys that, hey, we rely on products because it goes out there and it find the new versions for us and it updated for us. So what I'm talking about is this package library right here. If you look at this package library, you see that it will give you all the uh, all of the common tools that people request in their daily jobs. And this is this product has been used for many, many companies. Go to Spiceworks and do the review on that. I'm not just promoting them. You should go to Spicer and type, type PDQ. Mm -hmm. So based on that, they're giving you all of these products right here. Most of these products are common uh, tickets for us. Almost on every week, we will get something. I need Skype. I need TeamViewer. I need this. I need that. I need this. I need to uninstall Java. I need to that. I need to do this. I need to uninstall uh, Office 2016. These are now getting bigger, right? Like the, the, some of the, some of the deployments are pretty big because a lot of people are using 2013. They want to go to 2016. Then what would they do? If they want to go from 2016 to Office 365, what would they do? They would need to uninstall the, the the previous versions, right? Or they would need to create a scripts that can upgrade and uninstall and remove. Remember, if you are a technical person and you're working in a company, I can guarantee you that this is one of the crappy installations you're going to come across if you already have an office already installed on your machines. If you have 400 machines running, let's say previous version of 2013, and you want to run Office 365, then they know the pain that I'm talking about today. Go ahead, Kev. I wanted to, I wanted to add to that, that, that you're going to have problems with that, especially when you have add-ins. So you have add-ins are only compatible with Office 2016 or 2013. So you have to uninstall the whole thing, then reinstall the whole thing, then reinstall the whole add-ins, all the add-ins that come with that new office suite. So, you know, that does happen too. Just so that 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 requires a step-by-step -step solution, right, Kev? And, and this is exactly why the deployment tools are needed because then you either you can rely on scripting, which is gonna require a lot of knowledge, right? You're gonna do one thing with a script and another script will do another thing, another script will do another thing. And most of the time you're gonna spend too much time to even uh, come up with one solution, right? And you got to be good at it. And if you don't have that, of course, you rely on a product like these, which gives you step-by-step -step packages. So you may in install an application, application successfully installed. It will say that, okay, it's successfully installed, run a command after this, after that, run this script or run another application. So you can make a multiple packages in one. You can make a commands after that. You can uninstall some products right before installation. You see how much powerful it becomes later on when you do these kind of things. And that's why people say that, oh, there's a deployment team out there because they that's their job. That's what they're getting like that 90K because of this whole skills that they have, right? Does anybody have a question? No, okay. All uh, right. Sorry, did, did you say, you had said, uh, I think earlier previously, there are people who, th th that's their sole job. All they do is deploy software. 
that, that's like I said, they, there are teams that they are just doing this job. That's it. They're, they're working on SCCM, which may be a pretty advanced knowledge. They may already have that. And they may be deploying a, uh, you know, a product to 10,000 machines because that's how many people they have. And that's where they're paying them very big money because, of course, there's a big, big risk out there too. So I'll talk about the security stuff like that too in this, in this area. Yeah, go ahead, Cap. No, I was saying that they're, they're, they're called software developer or server admin, software deployment specialist or yeah. something like that. Yeah. Some weird title. Yeah. So if you go to the indeed.com, you can type today SCCM specialist and you're going to find deployment specialist. Deployment. Now look at their prices, how much they're paying them. I, I think most of them are going to be about 80, 90, 100K. Uh, because that's 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 kind of what it is. But now here's the thing: I don't want to promote this. Please do not do not take this word why because a lot of people think that oh that's so, so cool. I'm just gonna go to deployment. It doesn't work that way. There's gonna be like let's say 500 jobs in your area, and there's gonna be like a this percentage of job available for that kind of stuff. That's very specific. So you want to learn this stuff. You want to learn this stuff to to get better at your work currently right now as a help desk. But not, like I said to many people that this may not be allowed to you. And like I said, there are going to be jobs that even managers have no clue about this. So you got to basically kind of educate them. And then they will at a certain point, uh, you know, bring this. Because I was in a, in a company where they didn't have all this stuff. So I bring all these solutions to the help desk team. And then the, the help desk team were the one that are saying that Danish needs to be a sysadmin. Because he, he, he brought, he made our life so easy. We're sitting here today and on the same job that we were doing, for so many manual jobs today, he made everything like automated for us. Not automation is like, they're not losing their job. They're actually focusing on a better things now, rather than going around and doing some very tiny, tiny things manually. I, I just give them all these tools. I'm like, okay, there you go. Guys, make it easy for yourself, right? So you, this is where, of course, not every company is gonna be like that, right? Like I said in the beginning, some companies won't let you do these things. So that's where you make your mark right there to them that, okay, I'm gonna try it, I'm gonna try it, I'm gonna try it. If they don't let you go, you go right? You learn the skills, you become confident, you say that I'm skillful, then of course, nothing can stop you. You will hit that mark wherever you want to go. That's it. That's how you should, your attitude should be towards this stuff, okay? So now, of course, we want to keep this simple. Like, I just wanted to give you an example of how much it is involved. Even you can do these, uh, the CU updates, which is extremely huge updates. Like, this is what I like about this tool is like, you can actually get the whole update, which is about I don't know how many GBs, like two GBs, three GBs, something. And you can still deploy that manually. You don't have to wait for a machine. Why I needed this at one point? Because one day, one of we had two connections. One main connection went down. So now I'm in, I'm getting involved with, uh, you know, ISP, Cisco engineers, and all that kind of stuff. And I'm also kind of like working on that myself. I'm trying to troubleshoot that. And at the same time, there was something going on in the company that they needed an update immediately. So now think about it. My main connection is down. That was a fast connection. So I could have done a, a, an install, but that with the second backup connection, it was very slow. So I couldn't do this update on a slow uh, thing. So Kev, you can see that how I got stuck, right? So I couldn't go in 300 machines to download the CU updates now on every 300 machine. It will kill my whole network. And we were already running on a, like a very slow network, my backup. So what I did, I installed the CU on one machine, on one backup machine, which is my deployment machine. And then in a few minutes, because the network itself is fast, right? We're talking about internet, ISP is slow. Not, not the, the local network is fine. That's everything is fine. Like the computer, computer to computer connections are always fast. That's not like your internet connection, right? So I deployed that 300 machines in a few minutes, everything was done. I mean, of course that takes time for installation and everything, but my machines got the, the update and by next day, everything was up to date. So you see now you get stuck, you got a solution. That's how you move on in your in your career as an IT person. Like that's where you kind of start looking for solutions um, if you have the ability and they let you do these things, okay? All right, cool. So now we can do all this kind of stuff. We already know that. Now, how can we do a little uh, test right here? Like, because Stacy's getting annoyed right now. Like, she's like, she's like, you're talking too much. You need to you need to get me that FileZilla now, man. You've been talking like for one hour. Send me that FileZilla, stop talking. So now <laughs> we're gonna go ahead. The first thing what you need to do is what? We need to download FileZilla from internet, okay? And I usually do use this example. There's a reason behind this example that I always use. So I'm gonna download this on this, uh, you know, uh, you know, server. I'm just gonna download it. Go ahead and download it. There you go. We download it. We're gonna say save right here. And then that's 
that's download is over. Okay. So now, of course, you can say, hey, couldn't you find this in a PDQ? Yes, I could find it, but of course, they won't, then I need to pay for that, right? So I could, I could do files in a search right now. Look at this. I can click on here and I can just download the package. They all they have all the versions available right here. I can click on that and it will automatically create a package for me without me doing anything. This means if you didn't know how to install manually or you didn't know anything about deployment, you could just do, do, download it right now. If you have the enterprise version in your company, you would understand that this would be a pretty easy job right now, right? You will just click on it, it will download the new package for you and you just pick the machine deploy, right? But of course, why we're doing this whole session is that you will need to learn a manual way of adding a package so you can understand how to deploy applications. So the first thing you should do is to create a package. We downloaded that. So we're gonna go ahead to our download and we're gonna open that folder and we're basically gonna go ahead and let's say we're gonna put this in one of the new share. So either you can create a share for this stuff. You don't need to create a share because what PDQ does, if you do a deploy mode, it picks the software, it connects to that machine, it put it temporarily in there and, and does everything on there. There's a, there's a good reason behind it because when you put a software and copy it to a machine, it's very fast. But if you um, use a path to go back to the share folder, then it's kind of slow, right? It's, it depends on your network because everything is, if you have to, uh, uh, you know, if you have to use a share to deploy a software, right? And the software is getting connected back to your machine. So here's a problem with that. If we were to use a desktop to do this process, like let's say for example, somebody, somebody mentioned that to me that well, we should use a script. We should use a script to uh, deploy FileZilla. So would you use that share on a server or a desktop? Can, you, can anybody give me an answer for this one? Can we use a desktop to deploy that application to 300 machines from this desktop? The server, the server can handle more users, right? Then, then, uh, and how would you, how did you, how did you came to that conclusion? Well, we, I learned that from your class. <laughs> but how, how? There's a quota. There's a quota, but what about the concurrent connections? A desktop have how many concurrent correction, connections uh, right now? 20. Like at the same time, yes, there you go. How many? So if, mm -hmm. if you right click and go to this folder, let's say we wanna do this scripting, right? We wanna, yeah. we have a 300 uh, users requesting for a software installation. And you said that I'm gonna be using my shared path on a desktop machine. So if I go to properties and I show it to you right now, we go to sharing, we go to advanced sharing, how many, oh, I need to put my, you see how everything- Elevate your account. Yeah, so there you go. How many how many people can connect to this one share at one time right now? 20, right? Because the yeah. 20th person, 21th person is gonna get an error, right? As long as this one person has not closed a session, they can restart and maybe they'll, they'll give them. But if you go to the server right now, if I go to the C drive and I go to share and I put share right here, the same process, if I right click over here, and go to properties and I go to sharing and I go to advanced sharing, how many you how many people can connect over here? A lot. That's a huge number, huge number, right? So if I do permissions, I'm gonna do share. Let's, let's just do all for now because we wanna make it simple, uh, you know, smooth. So we'll do domain users as well. Uh, domain users, users, okay, that's a new, there's a new group I added. <laughs> That's my problem. When I do live trainings, I get like all these mistakes here. So here, apply, okay. So we just created a share just so we wanna also not come across any issues. So we're gonna put that uh, FileZilla in the share. You don't have to if you're using PDQ, but some other deployment things that we're gonna discuss today is gonna require uh, a share already. So this is gonna serve that purpose. We're gonna just use the same share uh, for the future uh, applications as well. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and put that in there. Now, what do we do? We need to create a package one time. So then every time I get a call from anybody in the building, or even maybe they're connected to a different building somewhere else and they're connected through VPN or whatever it is, as long as you have a connection to that machine, you can use one package for them to make your job easy. So we're gonna create that package. We're gonna say what? The first thing the package will require you to do what? You name it, right? You're gonna name it FileZilla. And then after that, what does the package want from you? What do you want to do with this package? 
you can either install the software, you can run a command, you can run PowerShell, you can run 15 commands step by step. You can run 15 commands. You can file a, you can you can send a copy and you can maybe restart the machine. You know, some some of the software, some of the updates specifically requires a restart, right? So you send the software to a to a machine and it says that I'm waiting for a restart. So this will do the job for you. It's gonna go out there, reboot the machine, and then after that, what will happen? You can even run more commands or more steps out of it. So what we're installing a software, so we're gonna pick the first one. And here we need to pick a file path right here. That's very important stuff right here now. So you gotta, you gotta make sure uh, you, know, uh, you pay attention to this area because that's where the, dop, the, the skill uh, is being used. Uh, generically everywhere, if you're doing deployments, it's the same skill, right? So what do we need here? What are we deploying to other machines? A software, right? So first of all, we need to pick that. So we're gonna go ahead and click on this and go where? To where we have put that software. We're gonna go to C drive. And then we're gonna basically pick, go to share and we picked it. And there you go. So now if people have done deployments, can they, they, can they tell me, that, not the live members by the live members can answer this question after a minute, okay? People who are in the chat right now or someone who can, People who have done deployment, what is this missing piece over here? What is the missing piece right here? Anybody? Anybody in the chat? Look at every attention to detail. This block right here. I want you guys to look at this block, install file, file details, parameters, additional files, success code, command line. What would be a missing piece right here when it comes to a deployments? When we download a file directly from internet, right, and it says .exe, can you just deploy that file like that in a command line? Just say .exe, deploy it to the machine. .exe, it's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna work, um, you know, like that. It's gonna get installed or it's gonna do something. What, why do you do deployment for? So good job. Parameters is one. That's a good. That's a good one. But what would be the other thing right here? After parameters, there there could be something else too, right? Perfect, perfect. WP, WP, you got the toffee. So, so you got you got you got the you got the thing. Listen, when it comes to deployments, it's first of all, we heavily rely on who right here. We heavily rely on a software how it is being developed. Software are not magically designed for deployments. So it's totally up to the, the, the software, how it was designed from the first place. So if it, if it was not designed for, if it, if it is not designed for uh, silent pushes or mass deployments, then it won't work. You cannot magically work that unless you go into the software and, and do your own thing. There's some, some software, that's it. You cannot, you cannot deploy it. If it's not designed that way, if it's not designed by, by the code that way, there's no way you can deploy that software unless you have to do your own coding and do some kind of crazy stuff with it, that's okay. You can do that kind of stuff. But normally if FileZilla developers did not create a switch, switches, silent switch, put a switch for that, put a parameter for that, parameters and or put, a, per, put a license key in the parameters or stuff like that, pick on different files, then of course I cannot do that, right? I My skills level, stopped right here unless you want to go and become a developer now and want to fix that that's something i would say that now you're crossing the skills to another level that's something not required but maybe you are so enthusiastic that you're not coding a software that is not your software and, and you can do that that's, up, that's your choice but ours are going to stop right here so first of all now they do that you let me know how can i find the switches for filezilla where would i find that that's the critical skills in this deployment by the way documentation documentation and where do i find documentation for filezilla now on their website no on their website so what do you need to do simple stuff guys simple filezilla silent switch you just need to type that in google and these are when you do deployments those are not small softwares by the way we're talking about zoom right here we're talking about software that is being used on a daily basis so tell me one of the things what is a silent switch over here? Yeah. 
if I want to deploy this software to Stacy now, what should I use in was the it, command line? Was it the, the silent thing? The was the it says there, slash slash slash. S. yeah, but here's look look how critical this is. What should you pay attention to? Capital S. Capital S. There you go. Look how specific it is now. And when you do when it comes to deployments, you got to rely on like that developers, whoever that developer, they specifically says, you must, you must put mm -hmm. the capital S. Could I just do a small S? It won't work. So uh, did you get my point? Like how we rely when it comes to deployments, you got to rely on documentation or else you're just kind of like clueless, right? Of course, I can put it in one of these softwares and some softwares has the ability to find a silent switch based on the code. Yes, they do have that ability. So in PDQ, you may put another software and that software may be well known and they can grab that from registry or from their, from their code. So it will grab it. They'll grab it and they'll say, this is a silent switch. I give you all that parameters and all that kind of stuff immediately right there. And if you would have downloaded that package from uh, PDQ, by the way, it's going to give you that. So that's what I'm talking about. It made it easy over there when you pay them. But that doesn't mean you cannot deploy when you don't pay people, right? And they, they, they have a good product right there. This means I can still use it. All I got to do is to copy this and go where? What do I need to do? I need to do space and I need to, well, this is not. Space, control V didn't work for me. <laughs> so there you go. So I put space. <laughs> Kevin's like laughing, like, man, this, this crazy keyboards. Okay, there you go. This is exactly what I need to put out there. And then of course I need to save that package and I saved it now. So then of course the next skill is how do you deploy it, right? That depends on product to product, right? But everything is very simple, right? They, they make it simple. You right click here, you do what? You deploy it once, you can click over here and you can deploy it once. And if you pay for them, of course you can make schedule, it makes it pretty cool, right? Because I have a, I have a, like I said, deployments, when you learn this deployment is not about, by the way, just software deployment, right? It could be what? It could be a script. It could be a CMD command that you want to uh, gather information based on that CMD. It runs on the machine and then you gather that information from that machine. So it could be anything. It's just that your mind starts to start opening up. So don't lock yourself down into, can I, I will, can I only do like software here? No, deployment. Tools are built for many other things, right? So that's where open up your skills mind right here. That's my focus right here from this session. Don't get stuck in just PDQ, PDQ, PDQ. No, it's not, nothing to do with PDQ. My training is not about PDQ. My training is about the skill that I'm showing you right now, okay? So now I'm gonna do deploy once right here. And once I do deploy once, and that's why I say it is critical for you to be on a domain connected environment because it's using what my credentials of my domain uh, you know, account. And that is the reason when I choose target right here, this is, becomes another level of it that, okay, where's the target? What do you want to achieve? Now, let me tell you, can you do a good deployment without inventory systems? You see how it touches another area now of our life, of our skills. Can you do a good deployment without inventory systems? Can anybody answer me that? If you don't know what's in your company, and I come to you today, you have, let's say, uh, 1,000 machines out there. And I say, you need to deploy this, this software, but it's a 64-bit software. But let me tell you, if you didn't know in your company that there are 60 machines, there are 32-bit machines, could you just blindly deploy that software to those 30 machines as well? No. So now, how important is inventory skills over here? Pretty important, right? If you were to do deployment, this means you needed to know about inventory ahead of the time. If you want to be good. Now, of course, you can say, oh, we got an Excel sheet. That's, I mean, I don't call this inventory system, guys. That's not inventory system. That's just you be manually. Somebody's like your CEO or your IT manager is pretty cheap right there that they don't want to invest in inventory systems. And they want you to go and do the manual job and open up one machine, another machine, another machine, another machine, and then drop it down into your Excel. And, and that's exactly what happened to one of my members. She went in there, she got the job and they told her to, can you go and write down all these serial numbers in the paper? There you go. Well, you need to know what's, what's in your database. That's how databases work, right? 
You got to know information. What's database? It pulls information, right? Queries. So here's the thing. You got to know what you, you already have out there. So PDQ and other type of tools, they make it easy for us. So what is the most common area we put systems out there? When we add a mach machine to our domain, what, 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 what are we talking about here? Where, that, where does that machine go? Active, active Directory, no? Copy active your... Directory, perfect. So when a machine goes to Active Directory, so they, every tools like these, they are always connected to Active Directory. That's why I say Active Directory skills and deployment, Active Directory skills in IT is critical, critical, critical. If you want to become a Microsoft uh, technician or normally just to help this person, usually a Linux people don't call you help this, by the way. I have never seen, or maybe I've probably seen very few examples. If you're a Linux certified professional or an engineer, they don't call you a help desk, Linux help desk. Right, Kev? They, they usually don't call you. That's not a normal trend. If they call you help desk, they call you IT support technician, most likely you're working on Windows operating system and a little bit of Linux, a little bit of Mac, because we got graphic designers, we got all these people, but a little bit of that. But if you get hired from a Linux area, they're gonna call you a Linux engineer, Linux. Specifically, they're gonna name that, name that, because it's not normal. It's not normal in the market. That doesn't work that way in the market that way. Okay, so here you go. We got a, an Active Directory. Then of course we got a PDQ inventory too. So this is a their product. They they have the product and they that can do the inventory stuff for you. Then there's what? What what did we just talk about? That another product is very well known in the community. Why would PDQ, a different company, put Spiceworks in there? What's the reason behind it? Does it make sense to you? Now you, you see why we put these names on your resume? Because this company also knows the importance of Spiceworks, right? Because millions and millions of people are using it, IT people. So they already know the importance. So you take that, you put it on your resume and you know that now another person will start respecting you too. Why? Because you're touching them you're touching the sweet spots for an IT person now, right? Kev, is that, isn't that, that how it works when you try to impress or sell yourself? Yeah, I agree with you. When, 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 when I'm uh, doing job interviews and they're like the guy, the, the person I'm into and he's like, yeah. So um, I'm like, so tell me, tell me, uh, so tell me more about your resume. And they talk about um, exchange 365 active directory, password reset, account creation. It touches, it touches my heart. It touches my heart in an IT in an IT fashion. I'm like, oh my god, he knows what he's talking about. Yeah, and that's and that's exactly what when I say that why we put a spice source in. I shouldn't put by the way two spice source over here. That's a mistake. So you, you guys are using this. Make sure you remove one of it, please. Um, so here you go. You because spice source is kind of like ticketing system too, right? So maybe that's why I guess I now I see like okay, yeah, I see why. So but you look at it right here. Why these two? are required so if you go back to our youtube look we got a you get a whole lecture on spiceworks and now we got a whole lecture on this guy right here so it would be amazing for me to people not take advantage from this right now and not put it on their resume when they do their practice just know that when you put it on your resume that doesn't mean you just put it on your resume you got to talk about it and if you're stuttering in your interview they're not going to give you a job they're going to then then it's going to become negative then it's going to become the other way ah uh, you're trying to trick me I see what you're doing here, right? So you gotta be confident, okay? So here you go. Okay, we're gonna choose Active Directory now. We're gonna go to computers. And you see when you go to computers, what happened? It automatically picked my machine for me. Another critical area right here. Okay, when you unjoin the machine from the domain, does the computer go out there and unjoin itself from this area? Like, does it re get removed automatically? No, right? When you unjoin the machine from a domain, it doesn't come over here and clean itself up. So if you did a bad job, let's say for five years, and you come back over here and you try to deploy that to, uh, let's say 300 machines, you know, you have only 300 machines, you're gonna see like, oh, in my company, I have 700 machines. Oh, load, right? And you're gonna, then you're gonna get stuck in there because you didn't didn't do a good job of cleaning your machines right there, right? Cleaning Active Directory. So if you rely on Active Directory, so here's my hint for you. I come across many, many times and then I have to do some scripts to clean up. Then I have to make sure that I tell the help desk to make sure you guys are cleaning this up. You remove a machine, you remove it from the Active Directory and I'll help you. If you guys can do this regularly, don't worry about it. Ask me after three months and I'll give you a script, remove it, right? 
And then when we do the deployments, it's a clean deployment. It got it, it, this is why it, it makes sense for people to keep track of things. Why? Because of these reasons. Now, deployments are not done, by the way, every single day. Deployments are done once in a while, but that once in a while can totally uh, like, you know, mess your mind. And that's the reason when I say that you can spend 24 hours inside your company and you will be able to do these things. Why? If you have a bad uh, way of, uh, you know, organizing kind of stuff, you don't have inventory, uh, you don't have proper systems, all that kind of stuff becomes manual. And then of course, it's going to be that one time. And for your life, you're going to be telling other people that IT is a bad job just for that one day. I know you're, you're doing an injustice to the brand new people because you're putting that Another five years that you were taking all that checks and nice and enjoyment in IT and you were loving it, but that one day screw your mind so much that you're going out there and telling people that IT sucks because I spent that three days. Isn't that way, Kev? Isn't that how we make our mentality? This is how I learned it from so many people. When they got pissed off for the one or two or three days and they got pissed off and they were telling people, no, IT is not for you because I did that. But what about the other five years that you were enjoying the hell out of IT? Right. All right. Okay. Yeah, so, people, people will, people will, um, people focus too much on the negative and never focus on the positive. There you go. So that's exactly what it is. Um, and that's why we are doing this. Why? That's why I stop, I stop in the middle of these videos because I, I like to say that in the beginning that my, my videos are not by products, by the way, my, my, my videos are not by how cool I can do this thing. Of course, I can come in and show you certain things that you'll blow your mind and how did you do this? But that's not about my videos. I'm, I don't wanna come here and show you my coolness or anything like that. It's about me showing you what's important in your job. It's about in your IT career. So that's why I'm stopping in the middle because I know a lot of people get mad at sometimes. Well, why are you spending so much time talking here? Because that talk makes people better IT professionals, okay? So now if we're going to come over here, we're going to come and spend, we're going to put Stacy inside the right side. If you have to put, pick all these people, then you can just click on this all arrow. You see, say all add machines. And in just one shot, you can have all these people out there. But of course, we don't want to deploy FileZilla to every single person. We want, we want to just pick on Stacy. So I'm going to say, okay. And, and this check mark is important in this specific uh, product. And I think most of the products have something in there. To tell you what, what does this check mark represent, by the way? If it was a check green, then it tells you that what? It's, it's good to install another machine. It's, it's that it's this machine is seeing the other machine. Basically, that's what it's saying. I can see that machine is live. It's working, right? But if you were to use basic one-on-one -on -one skills, how would you test that machine is live and running, this machine? Let's say if you don't see that machine, how would you just test that? Basically. You ping it. Ping it. Don't make it complicated, guys. Don't don't use some some crazy commands out there. Ping is the crazy command that is definitely gonna be there for you for your life. You know. I, I will restart the machine. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> but here's the thing. We're not okay. This issue. I was actually having it in the early um like early stage when I was doing this uh, deployment. I was having this issue too, and I could not resolve it. Kevin, I tried everything. I'm not joking. I'm not testing anybody, but guys. I, I having so much experience that I'm saying that I have experience, but I could not resolve this issue. I could not ping this machine. For some reason, I cannot ping this machine. <laughs> so, so I don't know what's going on. If somebody can correct me, they can give it a try. Trust me. And that, that shows you right there that even people working in IT, and I'm saying that I could have just totally not show this command and just kind of like get away with it, right? But I'm showing it to you because that's what I'm trying to tell people too. It doesn't matter how long, how much experience you have. Some of the basic things won't work. And for the life of me, I just can't figure it out. You had it on the DHCP server, the computer yeah, or the it's, machine? It's, it's in the DHCP server because it's added to the same domain. So I uh, basically, like say, for example, um, we want to know, because one of the things that I was thinking, maybe it's not joined to the domain correctly, but it's it. It's because be. I just logged in as that person, right? Mm -hmm. So it's already working. Then I was like, okay, maybe it's a firewall. So let's see if it's a firewall issue. Because I, unless I did a snapshot and I did remove it again, maybe I'm, I'm, I'm kind of forgetting it. So if I come over here and I go to the Windows firewall, there you go. Everything is good. But there's one firewall that is still connected. Maybe we can uh, remove that. Hold on. So, 
And of course, if we cannot figure this out, of course, I'm not going to spend too much time on here just to try to fix that issue. <laughs> Look at this. All fire, firewall are turned off. Anybody, anybody on the, in the, anybody in the chat? And I'm, to, I'm, hey, I'm not joking. I'm not testing anybody here. I know I did this and I can't, couldn't do it. I couldn't fix it. What's the, uh, what's the internet protocol, the IPv4 protocol? Is that set up correctly? I think it is IPv4. So if I go here, let's go here. You know what? Let's do this. Let's log off and log in as help desk because I want to see if my domain is actually working with the, because I never logged in as a help desk, like as a domain level. I logged in as a local help desk machine, so user. So I didn't do that, right? So maybe we can try that first. That will also kind of like let us, do a little bit easier way of uh, troubleshooting. What well, you spelled it? Help desk uh, wrong. Ah, uh, there you go. Uh, held, held desk, held desk. I'm not sure. It's good now, right? Yeah. yeah. All right, let's log in with the help desk account. What about the uh, DNS A record? Who said that? This is Steven. Who? Steven. Steven. Oh, DNS A record is actually a good point right there. So let's just check that as well. I got out to see if it was registered. Has to be. It sounds like a DNS issue. That's some something to me too. But I thought I added it to my domain and everything was working fine. So let's just go ahead. We can do it NS lookup too. But I want to show it to people. How would you go to the Active Directory and all that kind of stuff from scratch? Like, where is it coming from? Where when you said DNS, let's tell people where is it actually coming from, right? Because a lot of people ask us, what is DNS? How do I get to DNS? All DHCP stuff. So where is it coming from? When you when you tell people that this is a DNS issue, where is that? That's a domain controller having DNS, DHCP, all that stuff. How do I how do I access that stuff? I go to what? I go server to server manager. manager. Yeah, server manager. Come on, the live members, you already know this stuff. So tools. you go where? Tools, DNS. Uh oh. Go to tools, DNS. Yep. And then we open the DNS. Where do we go here? The forward lookup zone. Okay. You go down to your TCP. Is the is a record in there? Right there. So would that still be a DNS issue? Try maybe removing it and re-adding it. Ah, that's a good point. You try that, see if that works. Remove the de delete it and then re-add re it. Is it again, that what yeah. you're saying? All right. All right, let's get to an IP fake. That was your IP config uh, forward slash register DNS. On the A command prompt to re-add it, VA record. IP config slash what? Forward slash was a registered DNS. Registered DNS, that's how? Yes. Uh, okay, yeah. should, we, yeah. should we run this as an administrator? Yes. Sir. Okay, let's go and do that same thing. So guys, when you say all these things, I want you to kind of like explain it a little bit to people too, because we have a very, very extremely new people right here. So guys, most of the commands that we run at this level needs what? Evaluation, right? anything DNS, even though my help desk is what? A domain admin. But look at this, I still got stuck with that because I didn't, what? I didn't evaluate it, right? Uh, uh, so what do I do now? Yeah. I begin config. Yeah. Forward slash register DNS. Forward slash register. DNS. And I cannot type it, guys, <laughs> sorry <Yeah>. about that. <laughs> look at this, I'm typing it, I can, because when you're using a VMware ESXi in the web browser, it's always like a shitty, you know? <laughs> But here's what's happening right now, guys. Let's see it re-add and do the, if we want to do a refresh on there, it should re-add it to the A record. To the what's that, sorry? I, I'm, your voice is too low. Is everybody hearing them clearly? Sorry. No. Uh, the voice is a little too low right now. So you want me to refresh this? Does it work? Should I restart the machine? Let's do a refresh on that. In the DNS manager. Uh-huh. Yeah. Not there yet. It probably take a little time, but That's sometimes if it doesn't work, you have to do a re restart, or sometimes you have to do all that kind of stuff. You probably sometime even do the full, uh, you know, um, releases in the IPs because that's also because what, what are you doing right now? You're registering that IP address too, right? So if you look at it right now, still not coming up. So let's go ahead and restart on this. Like I said, we're not gonna spend too much time on this. If it doesn't work, we'll pick on another machine, but 
the, the thing is this, so you're going to come across these type of issues in a, even with, if you're doing deployment, if your machine doesn't see it, then what's happening? You're going to fix the issues, right? So some of the issues are going to be weird like this. And some of the issues are going to be like, what, what, what can other issues be? Let's say if my DNS was working, my ping was working, what other issues can I, can I come across in deployments? Permissions, right? Mm -hmm. Because that machine probably can get to my, what? My shares or that uh, machine, the, the server cannot see it properly. And in this case, we're having a DNS issue. This may be an issue that when I start deploying it, it may work, it may not work. I don't know. I have not tested it on this machine, by the way. So you know that you got to fix these issues then, right? Because then you may have, if one machine is having the same issue, then you're going to go and do what? Fix all this stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Please ensure you have a static IP address. Why would I need sta static IP addresses for this stuff? Are you going to go and put static IP address in 300 machines? Yes. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> You're very go crazy then. <laughs> Why would you need a deployment? Just install it on, in there too, right? <laughs> All right. Let's let's go ahead and refresh this. It's machine's taking forever. Yeah, this like okay. So here's the thing: when we removed it from a DNS, right, and a machine was connected to Active Directory, what happens when a machine is having an issue with connection to the Active Directory? Have you ever seen a computer being coming up very slow? It doesn't get to the login point. You probably know that there's an issue going on with the Active Directory connection. With that, as soon as you connect that machines to the Active Directory properly, then what happens? It opens up like that. And most likely you're going to see these type of issues where when you take a laptop out from your business and you, you bring it outside because now that machines rely on what? Cached password, right? And usually when, when a computer starts, it says what? I want to, I'm a part of a domain. I'm looking for this domain controller because I want to make connections to it. And it doesn't see that connection. So it spins, it spins one time, two time, three time, four time, five time, and then it fails. And then it lets you go to the login, right? In the background, that's what's happening most of the time when a computer is having issue like this. I think my tea is coming here, and I'm pretty happy right now. <laughs> this, this tea. Let me let me uh, just get. I had my tea already. I had my tea already. Okay, guys. So, do you guys want to talk to each other a little bit um, while I sip on a little bit of my tea? Any any questions that we can answer or something? Yeah, Steven, Steven, Steven was on my live chat. He's, he's really smart. He knows what he's doing. So, um, he's, he's been in it for a while. So Where's Steven, is he in the chat? Yeah. Uh, he's in a zoom. He's in the zoom chat. Um, I am the one with the low microphone, but I'm, oh, oh, okay. 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 Steve, uh, you're, you're the Steven. Yes. Oh, all right. All right. Awesome, man. Welcome. From Pennsylvania, right? Yes, it is. Pennsylvania and LA. What are you? You're in your underwear. You don't want to show your face today. <laughs> uh, not really. <laughs> hey, sometimes I, I they ask me that they why are you muted. I said I'm in my underwear, not here <laughs> somewhere else. What's up, right, guys? If that's, yeah, you guys can talk to each other. If that's happening, what I'm gonna do, yeah. I'm gonna do is we will spin up a quick new machine right here just so we can get away with this and quickly get to a deployment. Later on, we can talk about this whole different troubleshooting issues and everything. And we can add something uh, to our troubleshooting skills. Remember, Kev, we started that troubleshooting video first. So mm -hmm. we can expand that to more advanced troubleshooting based on these examples. Yeah, don't 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 bring up that, that machine from, from the UK. It'll take forever or whatever, <laughs> from Canada. Oh my Dennis, God. Dennis, if you want to use my machine, you can do, uh, use it. I. Open no, that's that's fine. That's fine. We, we look. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna install the whole thing from scratch. I'm gonna show you another thing. Like, okay, I'm. I'm not gonna do all this stuff, all over I, again. I have most of the stuff already installed. Okay. PDQ so, deployment everything. Oh, no, no, we we have we have 28 people here on on YouTube. So just reinstall everything from scratch. <laughs> <laughs> actually, actually, I don't have it, man. I thought I had an image. I'm just kidding. Uh, yeah. Whatever. <laughs> All right, let's go back. 
But remember, guys, that this is a lab environment, so we're also pushing um, a you know a connection, like we're forcing this connection, the DNS to this domain controller. Usually, when you are in a company, that doesn't happen that way, right? You don't you don't get to see a DNS being plugged into a a local DNS to connect to a domain, right? That's for troubleshooting purposes. Uh, people already have systems working, like your DHCP is working with your switches and routers. Everything is working fine because from that network level. So you don't go around and you put all these IP addresses and remove IP addresses and pull all that kind of stuff. Unless a machine is having an issue that we cannot resolve, what's the last thing we can do? We can unjoin this machine totally from the domain and rejoin it again, right? Mm -hmm. let, let this whole connection work all over from start and let's see if that fixes it. So if I come over here, the first thing is that I wanna test that, can I ping my DC right now? I know we're gonna check that DNS later on, but first thing, if I wanna come over here, I wanna see, can I ping my DC, right? Should we do that? Yeah, let's try that. Let's try that, ping DC 4000. Can I ping it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Works. Okay, now if I say that I'm gonna grab a file from that server, even though I didn't check anything else, can I ping my server, I, um, uh, sir, uh, that, that one right there? Works, right? Yeah. Now, if I go back to my server, let's go back in there and do the same process. Try this again. Yeah. We're still having an issue. Oh my God. <laughs> Okay, guys. Uh, we tried. <laughs> we tried. Okay. So here's the thing. If I come to this deployment right now, I'm going to do a deploy and do the same process again. Let me see. Actually, I had to open it before. Just de deploy it anyway and see if it works. No, that's what I'm going to do right now. <laughs> see what, what PDQ tells me because I wanted to show that does it, does it do anything for us? Does it give us any logs or anything? Sometimes they do. Sometimes they won't. But if I cannot make the connection, you see, if I cannot make the connection through the ping, you see, that was my first try because without me relying on a product, what did I rely on? What, what if I didn't have a product right now? What if I was using a script? So what did I rely on? A basic ping skill, right? Mm -hmm. Because maybe Steve also know and they're all, they're working in IT. We know that some companies will not let you install these products on in the side of the company, right? So can you rely on this product? Can you download it and then realize that it's not working? No, you first need to go back and you got to do all that basic troubleshooting, pinging, this and NS lookup, all that kind of stuff. What Steven showed us, you register, you remove the DNS, you register back in there. That didn't work also. Yeah. Most of these things probably, maybe there's issue. Maybe maybe I put a DNS, uh, static DNS in there and I put a Google DNS with it too. Maybe there's some, a lot of things that can happen, but of course all of these other machines are built the same way. So there's definitely something weird happening in this machine. And like I said, this is the reality of IT. Like I'm not the person who's gonna be always giving you a perfect picture out there. I wanted to show this because I know it was not working. I could have simply add a new machine and I know that would work, but I wanted to show you that I got stuck somewhere. And I, as a person with 30 years of experience still cannot figure it out. Is that not the reality? Tell me any of these people that are working for IT for five years, six years, is that not the reality? We get stuck. Yeah, yeah you, wanna, I, you wanna you want to throw your computer out the window. You want to throw your computer out of the window. That's the same. <laughs> <laughs> pretty much what it is. So here's a, here's what other thing we can do because this is failing right now. It says the target is what? Target is offline, which we know it's not offline. Try it's running just, it. Try running it again. Try running it again. No, join no, it no again. More. No, no, no. Try running the software one more time oh, from okay. the beginning, from scratch. Redeploy. So Redeploy. what you can you can do is you can right click on the deployment. And I just open the same thing. You don't have to like retype everything. I, I could write the IP address too, but that's still not gonna work. Because if, if we cannot ping the IP, this, this, the, the, you know, with what? With the DNS name, we cannot do it that way. What, what can we, the, what is the other way to ping machines? Just ping the IP address, right? IP address. Right? That still doesn't work. I, I try that, it doesn't work. So I can run the deploy again. It's gonna tell me the same thing. So one last thing that I can do because I feel like there's definitely something out there. What well, last thing we can do is to remove this from our domain, put it back on the work group, right? And join it again. See if it gets all the IDs, DNS, all that kind of stuff, get corrected again. 
unless we did some kind of mistake, I was sleeping and I added to another domain somewhere. I don't know. <laughs> you know, in my lab environments, how many people are taking these, these courses? Every third weekend, we have three, four people. So we have a bunch of domains running <laughs> inside these labs right now. So I used to I used to give people that say, hey, you can use hq.jobs2share.org. So then I did like HQ1, HQ2, HQ3, yeah. and then another person came in. He also put like HQ1 in there. And now we got a conflict in there. I was like, damn, this is not a good way to do labs. So they started doing initials now. You see how it says DK. So Eddie, probably you guys were not. Yeah, I was this. one. I, <laughs> you guys were. You guys were one. I was wondering what the hell is DK. I get it now. Okay. <laughs> because we came across a lot of issues, right? Okay. So how do I unjoin this machine from a domain? By the way, this is another skill that came to why I said in the beginning, you cannot run from Active Directory, even if you're doing anything in IT, you just can't run from it. Go to system. You go to systems. And do what? Uh, scroll down. Uh -huh. to uh, system info and change change setting good job change the settings and we go would yeah. change what? changes yeah can we put anything yeah. in here would anything work or do we have to put work group in there do we have to like type work group or we can put anything, we can put anything. what's that no you can put anything you can put anything you can put anything why because work group is just name but the thing is this, if other computers are in the same group, then you need to make sure the names are the same. And that's how what people do in lab environments, right? Lab one, lab two, lab three. Uh, so this is a very common practice in, a, in a, some type of like a schools or because they don't wanna be using the same work group for security reasons, right? A lot of people just wanna change things to trick people. So, okay, we removed it and we're gonna basically restart. Now, here's the thing, I wanna tell you another important piece when you guys do this part right now. A lot of people do this in a hurry. I might have done it too. And they forget their local admin passwords most sometimes. And specifically when you become a sysadmin and you do upgrades on servers, 2012 to 2016 and all that kind of stuff, right? And you mess up something in the upgrade, you don't have any way to get into that server unless you know the, the local password. But when it comes to security these days, we use labs. It's like a software. Basically, it goes out there and it changes your passwords automatically. And if that gets messed up, you're stuck. So it's, it's critical for you to know this stuff because if you don't that, if you don't know these things, you're stuck then, right? And how, how would you, Steven, are you saying something? Yeah, we used to use laps um, where I worked over at our healthcare company and it never worked. Laps broke like 95% of the time. We ended up just re-imaging the actual machines. Laps oh is terrible. God. Laps that is, is crazy. terrible. That is crazy. Yes, it was because they actually took out the administrator's password. Uh huh. And we had no way to get into the side of the darn machine except to use laps. When oh, wow. we used laps, it broke Maybe, like when, when, 95%. How long was that? Because you know now you can go to the Active Directory in the editor and you can actually grab the password from there. Uh, well, not too long ago, we were using it, but they, um, it actually broke all the time because we had to use this one wizard. We went in, we did it, and then it just would break. It, it, it seemed like it would never transfer over to the actual machine. Mm. And that's, we that's would, so weird because what happened is to, let's say for when, when I deployed this solution with another engineer, okay. uh, what happened is that if, or let's say for example, somebody takes a laptop from office to home, right? Right. So the labs work based on how many days you put in there, right? 60, 80, whatever you want to put that. Okay. So when they would take the laptop out, we got into that situation and somebody says, oh, the labs password changed, but the local password now want to help that person. And he also changed his password through VPN. So it didn't go back and updated the cache password, but the labs password also changed in Active Directory. So then we have to go back to the history and you can actually retrieve this password and say, okay, that was a last password. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's a little tricky. Yeah, you got to go to like the Active Directory. You got to open the editor mode. You know how you can go to the Active Directory. If you right click on Active Directory right now, you won't see much. But if you go to advance, uh, right. um, advanced options, you get this edit options in a uh, editor, and you oh. can grab those passwords out of there. Oh yeah. Yep. Okay. But there's a better way now to fix that issue. Like for example, I actually showed this lab before. I don't know you you were there. Uh, this issue that a lot of people are having with a uh, 
uh, laptops not getting uh, uh, updating the cash password when they get out of the building. So the, the fix for that is that you need a connection before uh, a VPN connection before you hit the login, right? So Cisco come up with a solution a while ago, it's called SBL, right? Sign before login. So there's a little Cisco AnyConnects before, comes out before your login and you connect with your AnyConnect first and then it connects and update your password. If that's not the solution that you're using, then of course you're gonna use some other open source VPN, which I already showed in my one of my examples. And that kind of fixes the labs issue too, because it goes back to what? Active Directory. Right. Yeah. In our in our environment, when we when we image a computer or a laptop, by by default, it, it, it actually adds a local admin account with, with it has a local admin account with the image as a local admin account, and it has we have our own username and password for that. So we could log into any computer if it's off the domain or whatever. So, yeah, and then it's kind of, and 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 that's what a lot of people are using. Like they will have a local admin uh, passwords and everything. Um, but again, when it comes to PCI type of environments, you know, when your credit card machines are credit card is being paid by on these laptops, they become very critical for that. They'll, they'll come and say, "Oh, you can't have a password save anywhere. It has to be automatically." Uh, changing and that's where I kind of come across these all these security guys man they will come back to me and like no 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 we don't want we don't accept this I'm like screw you guys <laughs> yeah, and, and I, I deploy um, with the with the with the clients or the users I deploy uh, last pass and typically I create a, a password for them and it like it's like a password it's like a third party too where you save all the password like a, okay I see yeah yeah got it yeah most of the people kind of like use that but let's see I'm, I'm gonna be one of those people that will not forget will not remember my local password in the labs and we'll just kind of trash this pc then okay <laughs> it does have some kind of issue going on this is too slow man can't be that slow every 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 time we go live chat you always have an issue with one of these it's machines. something with you kev it's something with you you look at my machines and they get scared you know <laughs> All right, guys. So what do we do now? Like, okay, before- Is it because I'm using the server? Or the access you give me, I'm using. Oh, the access that I, okay. You know what I mean? That's the same servers. Yeah. Well, you all have like a pretty powerful servers, by the way. I mean, you all are using SSDs and you're all using like 30 GB RAM for your servers. So that's pretty enough power for machines to give it like 8 GB and something like that. But I don't know, this, specifically this machine is having an issue. My Like my domain controller and my servers are blazing right now, but these two, these Windows 10 machines are uh, crazy right now, okay? Ah, look at that. I mean, I, I don't have I don't have an answer. Yeah, it's magic. <laughs> so what do we do now? What do we do? So we're gonna go back to system. Because remember, if I wanna deploy this software still to the Stacy machine, it's still not gonna work based on what user I'm using, right? I'm using an Active Directory domain user uh, and I'm not going to rely on a work group users as well I don't I don't want to do this for work group machines I mean unless you have labs or something I still have to come back over here and I'm just imagining you add it to the domain and it doesn't work again <laughs> it probably won't work that means there's some crazy issue in my DNS or something or maybe I put a wrong IP address or something like that you know I don't know so uh, you come over here you go to a domain and how do we this is a basic knowledge guys if, if somebody's watching me and they're like what the hell are you doing you got to go back to one of our videos, okay? We did Active Directory probably like 50 times now on my channel. I don't know how many more times I'm going to do this. So I know my domain controller is connecting. Why? Because that IP address that I put in my DNS is connecting. I know it's, it's correct because it's pulling out the same information. So what account do I need to use over here to connect this to Active Directory? I think this is an ABCD for most of you guys. What is that? This, this account should be what? Your uh, admin account it should be an admin account. A normal user cannot do this, okay? So we connected it to a domain and we're going to spend another 10 minutes restarting the computer. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so while we're waiting on that, let's just go ahead and pick on something different. Let's say I want to pick on that domain controller. I'm going to deploy a machine, I deploy a, a Fazilla to domain controller. How cool is that? Have you, have you guys seen stuff like this? This is awesome, right? <laughs> what the hell is going on? None of my machines are connecting, man. There's definitely some issue going on. 
Screw this. <laughs> I was having problems. I was having problems a few days ago. It was running pretty slow. <laughs> All these problems are coming in one day when I'm doing my live session. Oh, okay, okay. There okay. we go. There we, we go. We're, we're a little impatient right here, guys. We're a little there impatient we go. right here. <laughs> what happened here? Normally, it should work that way, right? If we had, let's say, 10 step solution right here. So we're going to have to wait for that for all that steps to finish up in deployments. And then of course we're gonna get a, what? What's the, what's the what's, what does tell me that it worked? It's the, the successful status. It's the successful status right there. So how do I go back and verify that? I can go back to my, let's say the machine that I, I targeted. In this case, it was, it's what? It's let's say you should be a user, right? So of course, after that, a normal specific uh, user skills will come in play. Uh, what the hell is my domain? Probably in the background somewhere. Yeah, but it's, it should be a browser and I can see it. Oh, here. All right. There you go. So look at this. So if a user don't see a software, then what do you do after that? You look for a search for it. You're going to call the user. You're going to say, click on start and it should be here or there. But how did you figure this out? You first, of course, this is a thing. It is another thing that I want to talk about. Of course, it's not just about showing you how it's done, right? It's about how properly it's done. So here's the thing for you all. Would you, if somebody says that we need to get this software out to 1,000 machines in the next two hours, what would be your procedure, by the way? Would you do this package and did what I did? Boom, put three, uh, put 1,000 machine and you just deploy it? What would be your procedure? As a technical person, what should you do? I was gonna, I was gonna say that when, when we had a deployment of Office 365, uh, we install it on all the machines, and then um, as a as an IT server admin guy, I send an email to the whole everyone. Send an email to everyone. But let's let's go back a little bit. Mm -hmm. What I say is that if you have one thousand machines laying out there, and you say this needs to be done in two hours, what would be your procedure first? What would you think about? Like this, these are one thousand machines. I need to deploy this software to one thousand machine. What should you do in deployment? Well, no, we, have to, we have to see if these computers are online. There's some computers that are offline and some that are online. You're not going to be able to hit all of them. It's impossible. Exactly. So number one is to, of course, to just know they're online. But another critical area is that you, when you're working as a deployment, what's the company's policy as well? That's, that's where I'm going. Mm -hmm. So if you are doing mm -hmm. deployments and you're a deployment specialist, what do, what do they do first? They have to test that software before they shoot it out to 1,000 machine. Oh. I'll give you my own example. I once deployed a software to about 300 machines and that software had a blue screen of death in all 300 machines now think about my life at that day just tell me tell me my life would be how what kind of life would that be you're sitting there and you realize that your deployment just did that shit right 300 machines now the lucky thing for me was there was a fix for it so I redeployed again, the fix to fix my own problem. <laughs> Could you be that lucky, by the way? I'm sure you, not everybody going to get that lucky, right? They're not, they may not find a fix and they may deploy it to 1000 machine in, in, in knowing that Eddie may think, oh, I know these skills Danish, from Danish class. I learned this skill. This is an awesome skill. Let me just, let me just shoot it out. 1000 machine, boom, you shoot it out there. And all the machines goes down now. You got a problem, right? Big problem. So big problem right there. So of course, this is a very critical thing in any IT type of skills. You got to know, you got to practice, you got to have your own machines around you, virtual box here, there, another machine. And specifically in deployment, you got to have identical machines with you because you never want to rely. You never want to think about, okay, it works in virtualization. So it's going to work on that, that physical box too. That's not, that doesn't work that way in, in the real world. Because in virtualization, it may be different. In, in a real world, in a real machine, it may act differently. And then you will have a massive issue uh, in, in front of you, right? So this is just a quick warning for you because, like I said, this is not about just showing you how I do things. It's about how you think of things and how you kind of plan your things ahead to make your life easy because I would yeah. never want you to be in that situation, okay? I want, to, I want to add to that also. Like when you're installing these softwares, they have prosecutors, so they have requirements as well. Like some of them might require Java, some are require C++, some might require 
Visual Basic Studio. Some memory hard certain applications to run with it. It's not just going to run like that if you deploy it. The yeah, computer some, might need that. Exactly. And that's where like you could you could use utilize that steps in deployments where you can do a step by step process where you deploy the first one, the second one. So like, for example, the Office 365, uh, what's the what's kind of like the normal way you deploy Office 365? Right? It doesn't work that way. You can deploy it. But then, of course, what does it need after that? It needs license. Right. So, of course, the license has to be then, of course, you can put it inside the deployment as MST file or you can add another script to it. You can do it many other different ways uh, to add that. But of course, that's something uh, why we use deployment tools, because it makes our life easy by using multiple steps in there. Right. Mm -hmm. So I can guarantee you this may not work or it may work. Oh, my God. We got a fix way. I say that Steven fix is correct. <laughs> if I would have gone back and remove all of the DNS entries, Steven, and get, came back to manually add that, if it didn't add it into my uh, domain, I, I think that might have been a solution right there. So mm -hmm. I, I'll give that to Steven. I think I, he, he did. Uh, he did uh, but but <laughs> removing it from a domain was what? Like totally, I'm like, I'm not right. going to go into none of the manual stuff. Let me just go through the, everything back again and read And to be honest, I'm telling you, what, I, I did not do this. To, to trick people or anything. It was just happening and live and I don't know. I mean, it's just, it's, I have to start up and I'm like, maybe this is really stuff. So you got two solutions right there. One is the Steven solution. One is one is the one that domain control, okay? Or you could just throw it out the window. You can just throw it out the window. <laughs> you know, right. it's another thing too with the uh, deployment stuff going on. Like, let's just say it's during the weekend and we use, of course at work, we use SCCM. And the a lot of the clients on a lot of the, the, the client's PCs, if those clients get broken or they haven't, or they don't realize that the client's not working, they're not going to get the pushes out through the weekend. So any kind of Windows updates, any kind of uh, updates to applications. So a big thing with these deployment things is to really, if you can learn how to reinstall the SCCM client, make sure you can look at the logs when you are actually reinstalling the client, see what services are going on inside of there to make sure that they're actually working. That's a big skill to have too, because on the level two desktop or on help desk, you're going to have to reinstall that client a lot of times because it does break. And with when, and of course, when that thing breaks, your computer, your laptop stays in, as I'd like to call it, it kind of just time, time just like stands still. So it could be like Monday and well, this is Friday. Well, they pushed mm -hmm. out like five or six updates. Your computer is still on Monday. So your computer's you know, not up to date. You won't get online with like VPN. Um, your computer needs to be updated to the latest and greatest before you can even access the network outside using like, you know, uh, uh, you know, Cisco Any Connect or something like that. So something to keep in mind to learn that little skill really does make you a better tech. I've learned that and, throughout and, uh, the years. Steven, since you mentioned SCCM, which is a very common sweet word from a lot of new people who doesn't know about SCCM. System SCC Center. Yeah, so so system SCCM when they say no, I'm saying they know about it. Like they, they oh. will go, come across uh, these descriptions. Like for example, this one I think I already showed one right here. Maybe I clicked on it somewhere, and it was uh, I think probably the top one here. So let me see. Uh, maybe not. Maybe I'm just forgetting. But you know the thing about this is that I tell people that a lot of people come to us and, and this specifically in my platform or they're doing training. They're like, hey, what about the SCCM? I heard about SCCM, I heard about it. I'm like, do you know, they when they say SCCM, they're not talking about software deployment at that level. And they're most likely talking about that remote tool connection. Oh, you, right. When you right click on SCCM, which I'm showing you right now is most of the, because our members are kind of like, they have this practice lab access and everything. So okay. I'm gonna show this right here because since you talked about it, a lot of people say, how, how, do, how do I practice about SCCM? Because we don't teach about SCCM. I tell people that if we start teaching about SCCM, then I have to teach you about SQL servers. Then I have to teach you about Active Directory schemas and everything. Okay. And teaching about SCCM is way, like we, do, we tell people that you can totally, uh, you know, uh, use alternatives for that, like PDQ and stuff like that. When, st when people start talking about deployments, talk about these products uh, for the brand new person. But if, if you do want to learn about SCCM, which is a good way to enhance your skills, but 
definitely not recommended for who are brand new people to IT because they totally get overwhelmed with SCCM just by thinking about SCCM, right? So then I tell them, okay, you really want to learn about SCCM, then just do, the, do me a favor. Just go to this show retired titles and practice lab. Now, this is an access because we have a lot of members that are sitting here too, right? So if people say, okay, I want to learn about SCCM, just come over here and show retired titles and do this, this type system here. And then now you see, even though practice net lab may think that these are retired, but we don't think these are retired skills because we are a skills-based platform. People are still using 2012 CCM yeah. heavily, heavily. Yeah, they are, yeah. And, yeah, right. and if you click on it right here, now if I click on it, since we talked about SCCM, look at this right here, creating and deploying VHG, administering deploying applications right here. So there's a full blown lab for you. If you click on it, there you go. You got a whole one, two, three, three <clears throat> SCCM centers. You can turn it all, turn it on with the uh, domain controller, everything, turn it on. And let's learn the basic skills of software deployment from these labs and also try to go around and touch that remote tools. You know, a lot of people ask about SCCM the reason for that they ask about SCCM because a lot of people use it to get into machines or the client machines. You right click, you do remote tools and you're in on their machines and you're remoting into their machines to help them out, right? Yes, you can use that, yeah, as well. And yeah. most likely the level one, when they ask you that stuff, that's what they're referring to. They're not telling you, can you install the whole SCCM? I mean, even me, a person who deploy this stuff on a regular basis, I feel like I'm very much behind when it comes to SCCM deployment of the skills. Because it hits another spots in, in the areas of like SQL and all that kind of stuff and schemas, which I don't touch on a regular basis. So if I can do it with that kind of experience, then a brand new person who's coming into IT, how can even they consume this information? No, right? So then I tell, I kind of, this, this is where I tell people that, okay, now you need to come back to some easy tools that people know about like PDQ, Manage Engine, these type of tools. And then you basically use that to kind of cover your SCCM area. Okay. And that's it. Okay. And, it, and it works for a lot of people. So okay. like if, I, if I click on PLAB SCCM right here and I say, okay, and I minimize it, you see all the SCCM tools are available right there. You can just open the whole console without oh. going back to the whole thing and actually learn from it. Like, for example, this is what uh, Steve is talking about. Configuration manager console, you come over here as a technician, you will come over here and you will say, okay, who's having an issue? Okay, I'm having an issue. Kev, uh, let's say Kevting is our employee. I'm having an issue with this PLAB VM1. You right click over here. This is the skill that they're looking for. You start and you click on remote assistant or remote control. That's it. That's if basically you, what we used over there. Yeah. It's, it's, and also put like, you know, computers into the, uh, the, the actual device collections. So we could we either give them like the MAC address or the actual host name. And then we could go in and then we could actually, uh, you know, reload the operating system and stuff like that through SCCM. So that's how we got it pushed out. So we could pixie it over the network. Yeah, and and, and like add it to the collection. And all of these skills are, I would say, is more advanced than just a, a person who is getting into IT, right? Right. Yeah. Pixie and uh, deploying operating systems and stuff like that, right? Right. So um, that's where, like, I don't know if you got me. You may be new to our way of uh, method of teaching. We basically start from Active Directory at the very basic level. So we teach Active Directory first because we tell people that exactly that's where you're going to be working in the beginning, resetting calls and stuff. Correct. Then we teach them about file permissions. Then we slowly, slowly get them into a mood of deployments and things. So they become like a, a mini sysadmin. At the same le same time, they are have this level. So they can think ahead, but they're doing their job as well. So it's a little different technique of doing it. It was exactly what Kev is doing. Kev is showing skills, right? Right. He's showing that skills that people don't know. And that's kind of like a work-related skills. And people love that because that's exactly how you grow. Correct. So, okay, that's good that you made this point. And I did want you to come back to SCCM because a lot of people ask when it comes to software deployments, this is exactly where you're gonna come over here. So all my lab members are sitting today, you can come and open this lab. And then of course, if you wanna learn about software deployment specifically, then come and do this lab, administrating and deploying application. I'm not gonna go through it because this is just too much, okay? So come over here and click on it and do these labs. You, you already paid for it, right? You got one year access to this stuff. So, um, okay, coming back to our, uh, issue. Of course, now I think it's working. I don't see any reason why it's not going to redeploy. So even though it says check and everything, if I do the same redeployment again, I feel like it's going to get connected and it should work. If it doesn't work, then I'm closing this. And I'm going to sleep. <laughs> okay, there you go. There you go. You see that? 
No, just help. just uh, contact help desk. Any help desk issues, bro? I'm calling you. <laughs> 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 All right, so uh, okay, that's done, and then it's, it's gonna get done, right? It's gonna get deployed. You already know about now. What was the most important thing in this thing? What I wanted to show. What I wanted to show is that how easily you can install a product in your lab and learn a deployment skills where on the other hand, if you're using a CCM type of product and you go online right now and you just look at it, how to install a CCM, you're probably gonna pass out for a little bit. And then you, you'll try to attempt it and then you will basically leave IT like, okay, that, that's wrong. <laughs> okay, so this way you can, you did that, you put it on your resume in your lab and everything. Okay, you, you can talk about it in my lab. I did this, I use PDQ. You hit that term right there, okay. Now, we talked about the other methods too. So what do you guys think? Should we continue for this one or should we do another session? What do you guys, what do you guys think about that? Are you guys like down for a little bit more or what? What's the, what's the situation here? Another session. Let's do what? Have you shown them how to deploy in uh, software and group policy? Or that's not something that they're ready for? That's that's something we will cover um, because group policy is another way to deploy. Yes, exactly. Right. Yep. Which is harder. I mean, just which is a pain in the butt, but it it does work. But it's very very clunky. I think a little bit, at least especially in the the test environment that I have, it's very very clunky. Yeah. So even even, even let's just hit it a little bit because in my next session, what I would do is because I want to go to a place where we call a more. Uh, proper, uh, not proper, more like a bigger level softwares. Like for example, we're gonna talk about Manage Engine. So what Manage Engine is basically, it's a patch management system. At the same time, it gives you the ability to deploy softwares. And at the same time, it, it gives you a self-service portal. So next session, when we do that, we're gonna pick on that one. And because it gives you a complete picture of a deployment, you can do a massive deployments with packages and, 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 and side packages, you can do scripting now. So that's something we're gonna do this next session because we can add a one or two scripts in there. And also we can turn on the self-service self -service portal and so people can install things. But what Steven is talking about is also a pretty cool thing because if you look at it, uh, you can do group policy deployment. And why would you best, basically, if I like ask you, why would you go for group policy deployment? What would be the reason? And let's say if I have a PDQ deploy, what would be the reason for you to go for a group policy deployment? Like, you know, let's say you do have these products and everything. But now you got the group policy too. When would you need that? Anybody? WP, I'll make you, I'll, I'll prove you wrong right now. You said nobody deploys software using GPO. That's a, that's a pretty big statement right there. Like I said, it, it did. It does work in the intense. Like when I spin up my 2019 server and I have clients and I try to deploy it. It it is clunky. It. You got to be very, very specific, I think. So let's let's see. More let's let's talk. Let's there. let's show people what we are talking about. So when yeah. brand new people, they know. So group policy, we already do a session on this. Of course, we're not going to go in too too detail in this because group policy is another world right there, right? In in group policy, you can even land a job yourself, right? So you can even you can be a group policy administrator. Heck so, yeah, so, man! It's group policy, you can get lost in there for hours if you want to. It's crazy. Exactly, and and we do at the basic level, Stephen. Uh, like we actually teach this stuff to our level one. Why? Because there are certain group policies that a level one should know, specifically for password resets, the length of it, the amount of lockout. So when they don't know about group policy, they're stuck again. Then they, they, that Active Directory skills become 50-50. You know. So here, uh, I want to talk about that. What Stephen is talking about is this. You go to the group policy and you click edit right here. And uh, when it fails, you're screwed, you'll be surprised. Okay, no, we'll, we'll talk about this because you said that group policy, who would use group policy? Group policy is definitely people use it, trust me. So this is what Steven is talking about, right, Steven? Unless I'm wrong or anything. So you got a software installation yep. right here, right? You are correct, yep. But what are the problems with this stuff? First of all, it's not robust in a way that you cannot just do step-by-step -step type of thing, right? You can you can put multiple group policies out there. You can do all that kind of stuff, but you cannot put like inside, like, you know, some, some customization with need, easy way of doing commands. Of course, you can add some scripts to it and everything, but of course that becomes more and more and more involved in it. But if I want to do an easy example, I don't know if that's going to really work or not, but let's just go ahead because what's the most, 
uh, you know, useful, um, what's the most common deployment these days? Zoom, right? Everybody wants Zoom, right? Yeah, I guess, yeah. So for, ma for mass deployment in group policy, what do we need? Do we need EXE or MSI? MSI. MSI, we, no, we're always running MSI in group policy. So we're gonna click on download MSI right now. Okay, we're gonna, we're gonna download it. And we're gonna come over here. I've already downloaded it. Okay, so let me just, cause I never use group policy with this stuff. So let's just do, let's just put this in the same, um, right here, we're gonna put in the share. It's already in there. Okay, let's do this. Okay, so here's listen. When you when it comes to group policies, there's certain things you need to know. If you first of all, you need to right click on here. It doesn't tell you like exactly what to do. You're gonna right click on here. You're gonna go to new, and you're gonna go package. And once you go to the package, you're gonna go for. Uh, there's certain ways. Can I put the share path in here, or can I put just go straight to the share right here? Like if I go in, and hit that, what happened here? You need to put the the actual share. So, so number one thing before you re even touch group policy, what do we need to understand more over here when it comes to group policy? Sharing sure. permissions, right? Yeah. Basic thing. A lot of people will not know this if they're brand new to IT. So the first thing we need to understand is here, we need to put a path in here. So let's just go ahead. What is the path here? So we do DC 4000 slash share. This is where I'm sharing it, right? Share two. Yeah, there you go. So we're going to go ahead and do that and right click, go new package. And now I'm gonna move that. You see how I clicked on that little explorer? And I'm gonna now, again, I'm having the same issue. Kevin, Kev, everybody should look at me. I'm like, <laughs> I always have this issue. Okay, so you see, I have to actually go inside by share. And then if I click on it, you see, it worked, right? Of course, and after that, you need to do more assign advanced. It's not going to that kind of detail, but here you just click on it and boom, you gotta, well, oh. you gotta, you gotta run validation software, okay. We have to validate this. Got it. So if you come over here, what, what are we missing here? It's still gonna fail. What advanced? Nope, there's something else going on right now. You want you want you guys want to see the error again? Now again, Steve, I don't know. I don't know this error. This shouldn't happen, by the way. I thought, like I said, it's very, very clunky. You gotta um, click on the, it should. It should work. What the hell is going on? Unable to extract the deployment information from the package. So is this package not correct, by the way? It shouldn't, it's an MSI, right? It is an MSI or is it EXE? Oh, you know, that's a good point, but it is an MSI actually. It is, that's why I downloaded it right now. Oh, you know what? Maybe, maybe, maybe Kev can help us. <laughs> He's like, <laughs> it's like, whatever, man. <laughs> uh. Are you kidding me? How the hell we, did we lost all the space? What the heck? <laughs> okay, this is totally something strange going on. We're losing, it says that there's no space. So there's some issue going on with this machine that is saying space issue or something. And maybe that's why. But if you come over here, let's just do another share quick. But anyways, the, the, the thing I wanted to show is that, you know, group policy involves, like what Steven is saying, there's just a lot to it, a lot to it, right? Um, that you need to know about uh, forcing a command. Does some softwares run with a GP update force command? Does it work that way? Do you need to restart the machine? So then how do you deal with that kind of stuff? But there's a very important part of, <coughs> of uh, you know, uh, of group policy. Is there, does somebody have an answer in the chat? Are they saying something? No, there's, there's no answer, okay. So here, if we go to another share, let's just make another share quickly. Um, sharing, I'm on DC, right? And let's make everybody in there, domain users. Apply, okay. So this is, a, this is a share that we have right now. And let's say if we add that of, uh, 
a Zoom file to this share. I want to see if it works because I, I don't I don't see any reason it's not working. By the way, and it's, it doesn't make sense. Doesn't make sense. Um, yeah. Why? I can go by the path. What the heck? Okay. I don't know. I don't know. What's the what's the security permissions on the share drive on that on it's, that share drive share three? Full, oh, hold on, hold on. Let me actually open this. It's full permissions. You see? I don't know why this would be. Uh, you mean the security at this level or the permission level? Permission level. Right, domain so users. To yeah. everyone, main users. Okay, what we can do is this. We can figure it out because when you have issues like that, what should you do first? Like, okay, you gotta, you know that it takes MSI, right? Can I go back and just pick on a different MSI just to see if it works, right? I will just pick on this MSI and see if it works. Okay, so we got we got some other thing going on. So definitely, there's some issue that I I mean I'm, this may be very easy fix, but maybe I just I'm too outdated with that group policy stuff. So maybe that's right. But to answer WP question, why you would need group policy is this: a lot of deployment tools are not built to re. Uh, redeploy a software immediately when somebody, let's say, computer shut off. Computer was shut off for, let's say, tonight, and you did a deployment. 300 machines got deployed, right, Stephen? You did a you you deployed a, a machine like direct deployment. I'm not talking about agents or anything like that. SCCM has agents and everything. So you would need what? You would need a group policy. Why? Because every time a domain computer uh, uh, connect to the machine and you log in, the group policy kicks in. So there's no way. A user can run from my deployment through group policy. Correct. Yes. Uh, even during our even during our test when we were when we were we were fooling around with this, we even tried that like GP update force. You know, you know the force slash force. That didn't even that it gave us to where it came down and, and it said about um, the client side extensions and all that stuff. Then we had to reboot, and we had to reboot sometimes like two or three times before this actually got pushed out. Why it is, maybe because it's a virtual environment and we have it just going on and stuff like that, very low RAM. I imagine maybe that's why, but it is very, very clunky. You got to, we, we found out that Google Chrome loads nice. We tried to do Adobe Acrobat, uh, just reader, and we were having fits and fits. And we finally shared it in a folder because it does come down with other files. And then once mm -hmm. we did that, we got it to go. Now, why it just worked we're like okay it worked okay fine so it does get very very clunky it's you know i imagine it works well in the real world in a real world environment but yeah that's why i mean i'm sure that's why people use sccm and all those other you know so when you're when you're having issues with a group policy level or stuff like that where should you go anyone that's another skill right it comes to uh, somebody no, asked that in Somebody asked somebody asked that in the KevTech live uh, you know session that when do you use event viewer? If you are a sysadmin, I say that if you do not know how to use event viewer, there's no way you can become a sysadmin or you can stay at that job because you're working on server levels. Most of these applications are using what IIS web servers, right? So all these applications are running on an IIS, right? So all these errors are going where? Your events, right? Or logs, right? So most of the server issues, let's say if it's an Active Directory issue, if it's a login issue, if it's a group policy issue, if it's a deployment issue, WDS issue, WSYS issues, where does it go? It goes to events. So at the help of this level, maybe you may not use events, but still use it. I mean, if still you don't know about it, then it's, it's like, I would be like shocked. Like if you don't know about events, right? I'll be like, what the hell? You don't know about events, right? So because there's certain level of errors that you can only get it from events and, and, you, and an application will not even give you a right error. I'll just say, I can't do it, right? Or it won't open up. So where do you, should, should, you, should you go to, to extract that real error? So you see right here, there's, a, there's this error was not serious enough to justify the halting the operation. What kind of crappy answer is that? I think I'm done. I'm done for today, Steven. <laughs> this error. What is that? Kevin. Wow. <laughs> That's crazy.
<laughs> what the hell is serious enough to justify having the operation? Anybody in the chat, have you ever seen an error like this with the answer? Wow. This? <laughs> Somebody, you should like Google that and see what the heck people say. It, that, it, that is it, it says the temporary solution is to unpack the MSI running the command line and then try doing it that way and it should work. Hey man, you think I'm going to do that? <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> The, the question is, the, the main thing about this is, of course, we're having all these issues right here, and you see where I went, and I found an error, and of course, later on, I can just come and play around with it just to make my life easy, but of course, the idea of what, what it is, is basically that so, uh, with a group policy deployment, it's going to be, yeah, it's, it's a deployment tool, but it's not used for mainly for deployment, the one we are talking mainly about, right? SCCM is the tool that you will use, PDQ is the tool, BigFix is the tool, Manjinjin is the tool. All these type of tools where it gives you more control, more easiness, EXC patches, steps, and all that kind of stuff. So at the end, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, when I, I'm ending this session with session one, part one, basically, because we still have to cover part two with more advanced tools like manage engine on bigger level uh, deployments. Okay, so, but to answer people, group policy, you cannot run away. I use group policy with many areas where, let's say, for example, I'll give you an example right now, Stephen. One day a manager called us and said, hey, we got a lot of vendors logging into our systems and they RDP into our systems. Can you make sure that I get an email who RDP to which machine, what time, and then what time do they log off? That's pretty tedious. Like, how, how would I do that, right? I need a system, yeah. right? That seems pretty intense, yeah. Yeah, that seems that's pretty intense. intense. So what you want to do in this, in this case, like I would have to run a group policy with Active Directory script. So every time a, a vendor will log into the machine, it will hit that group policy and with that script, and then it will send us an email. Yeah. So think about it. If that vendor was about to hack our system or try to do something bad, can he remove my system, my stuff? He cannot. Why? First of all, he doesn't have rights. Second. He's always logging in. So the group policy is already applied on his machine. So he can never, ever remove my script. So for, for a question to, to answer WP, you cannot do these kind of things with deployments. I mean, you, you don't want to be putting a script forever, whoever logging in with the deployment. Deployments are like, you need a, a solution, you deploy it, and you're done, right? This type of deployment is like you need a solution for something that you're going to do again and again, and you want to you wanna grab it. Like, you know, you want to you basically... Uh, uh, you want to do it in a way that people cannot mess around with it, right? So that, that's where you're going to be doing this. Like if I want a software on all of my, my desk, uh, desktop or staff machines, and I don't want them to be shutting down the machine, I don't want to rely on that. I can wait for another two weeks, let them turn on the machine. Let's say after two weeks, they still get my software. And that usually works with other softwares too, like where they have agents installed, like SCCM have an agent in there, right? So the agents will say, okay, I'm missing this because it was commanded to me and, and I need to now complete that command. Um, it, get, it can get more technical like that. More of the, most of the applications are built that way. But of course, like I said, that's where you, uh, uh, <laughs> you must prove me correct. <laughs> I don't know if that's, that's about me or somebody else. <laughs> okay, so... I think we are we had enough today for level one starting deployment. I think we, what we did today is we we broke the ice. I would say for about deployment stuff, right? So this video can be used as a starting point. So Keftech, if you are making a video tomorrow about deployments anytime soon or any time in future, maybe or Steven or someone, so this video can be used as a video where you don't have to go back all the way and explain all that basics first because that's where a lot of people get confused right so what we me and captain what we do is like when he make a video something that he is if it's an advanced video then i make an extreme low level video if he makes a let's say a very extremely level one video then i make on top of that so that sessions that we're doing right now that's kind of like in sync right now i did uh wanted to not forget this by the way uh because uh, that we, is yes uh I was just following you, so I was able to uh, deploy Zoom on my machine. Oh, through group policy? Yeah. <laughs> oh. Let <laughs> <laughs> <I'll> show you. <laughs> oh. yeah. So, so the, what I what, what I'm very happy about today is that the, my student was able to do it, and you know the instructor was not able to do it. So that's a that's an achievement <laughs> for me. 
Because look, I'm I don't need another job, guys. <laughs> I mean, you 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 don't you you um you didn't play, you didn't deploy Windows XP yet, so you know we haven't gone over that. So <laughs> XP, I'm, we're gonna do that for fun, like a practice. But I don't want to forget this, by the way. So this link that I'm showing today is uh, it's called jobskillshare.slash free, basically. So this is for all the people that says that do you have a free content and stuff like that. Um, like I said, that our first course is 40% free, but that's 40% is required for you to come back to the second course, which is almost 80 plus hours for free, by the way. So you take the IT fundamental 40% and then you come back to the second course. This is almost 80 hours. This is almost another four hours and you come back to step-by-step -step format. So you then you see, then you can start with this virtualization playlist so because everything that we do these days is about virtualization, right? On-premises with cloud, this virtualization with cloud. So you can understand all this stuff right here, troubleshooting. This is where me and Kev started these sessions together and pretty long sessions about getting into troubleshooting. So that's where you can watch his videos and my video together and start with the troubleshooting process. So whatever we have done today, we didn't go in and like, you know, too much of detail about pinging and RDP and stuff like that. That's because we have already done that. So if you come back to now remote troubleshooting, we have done another five videos on top of remote troubleshooting. Now, of course, that's a different skills right there. Then if you've come down to now, here's here's the the the, the gold thing that I would say, look how many videos KevTech have. 77 desktop lessons right here. That's just massive amount of information that you have that you can use for free. And if you come down right now, you can see he has level one phone support. I didn't I never cover phone support, right? So you can see a syncing going on right there, right? Like how I cover certain things and then he covers certain things and how he make a response video on top of my videos, I make a response video on top of his videos. So you can come back IT at work now. And if you go by my first like course, that's exactly what I did, IT at work. So I, most of my examples were outside of the work, but he has this nice playlist. So you can watch him that way too. Now coming back down, there's IT career questions. Mm -hmm. At the end, everybody needs that, right? And if you go down a little bit, there's another channel that I, we never got him to allow our live session. I don't know when he's he gonna, uh, you know, come, come and join us, Caretech. Kubu, man, uh, if he's listening to me, come and join us, man. So if you look at it, he has a massive amount of some detailed interview related questions. And if you go down a little bit, then of course you feel like okay. you have done all that stuff right there. I can guarantee you, I feel like I would be shocked if you still are missing skills based on those videos. So if you didn't get something, maybe, maybe you're missing a theoretical understanding. So where do you go then for theoretical understanding? You should go to Professor Messer. Uh, videos right here 74 videos right here and and here and then of course you can come down and it never ends like you can come out there's 80 videos of career advices then of course i'm bald right here very nice bald hair <laughs> <laughs> so if you come down here about 80 so i don't know steven if i if i show this to a brand new person and they go through like 70 percent of these content do you really think that they, they, they cannot achieve their goals uh yes they should be able to yes that's uh it's all Pretty much all, all the stuff that you need is there. Um, you know, you just need that and just experience and then you just build on from there. So, so this is what I wanted to share with you. And now another thing that I wanted to share with that, anyone who is coming from CapTech channel, that's something that I wanted to actually, um, you know, that we will give them access to our free courses. We're taking, because a lot of the complaints about people like, I want to take a free course, but can I get the certificate? We don't give certificate for a reason because we check every certificate manually. We are the platform. We don't go by ABCD, by the way. We go by project. So you do a project, you submit a project, we approve it. So we tell Kevtech that, you know, if your people are coming to us and they're complaining about, let's say, how do I put this on my resume? I want to put this course on my resume. This, let's say the top four courses are very crucial for you. When you have it on resume, there's a certificate. We're saying that we're going to give that basically to even to his member for free. So they're, they're not, they have to still submit the project. This doesn't mean that they're gonna come to us, they're gonna say, I, I need a certificate. And this never works, not, not even for premium. When people pay for our live training, they don't, they don't even get it that way. They have to actually perform these steps with us, then they get these certifications. So we're the only platform that we don't believe in ABCD type of uh, processes. And that's why uh, a lot of people get stuck in there. So if people are coming from his channel and they're taking these courses, then just let us know that you're, we're gonna make a, a little bit solution for you. So this is the easy and a little bit more automated. And then you can submit a project and we check it and we'll give you the search. Does that work, Kev? I, 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 from watching this video, I learned absolutely nothing. 
I'm, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. No, that, that works. That works. Uh, <laughs> All right. So now uh, I think we're going to end it over here for session right. one, part one. We're going to meet again for part two and we're straight go into a deployment in manage engine. We're not going to talk anything basic that day because we have done that in this. So if anybody comes to you, Kevtech, and tomorrow talking about software deployment, or anybody wants to create a video on top of software deployment, you can always use this video. It'll be available on YouTube. And you can always use this video as a first breakthrough for a lot of questions that you don't have to answer again. So that, that's, that's the way we can all help each other out as a community. But if you make a video about deployment, let me know. So then it becomes a part of this whole playlist. So, uh, Pete's digging on the first job. Yeah, I mean, like I said, a lot of people have different approaches. And like some people say that I would, I would go to my first job and learn everything from there. But getting that first job, there's a huge community that got stuck in there. They cannot even get the first job. So some people are lucky enough to do that. And some people are strong enough to say that, okay, I will, I will wait. I will just land that job and learn from that job. But the problem with that is in IT community, there's too many issues. And if you don't re rely on a mentorship and you don't follow some mentorship, then what you're doing is like, you're saying that I'm, I'm good on my own. But of course, there is a lot of things that you can learn from other people. I believe in sharing. I believe in sharing skills. In IT specifically, if you share a skill, you grab it, you cash on it, and you learn more skills, and you grab, the, you share that skill. That's how it works. If you want to make more money, you want to make your life easy, you want to become a better technician, you got to be able to have that mentality to learn from other people. Whether you do it for free, whether you do it for paid, that's your own decisions. You, you use a common sense um, when you pay for money, and you use um, common sense when you invest energy. As simple as that. And the, the, the thing is, I tell, I tell people when we start, when we start talking, and I'm like, do you have, they tell me they have IT experience and they get their first job in IT. And I'm like, do you have five years of, of five years of IT support? Or do you have four or five years of password resets? Just changing <laughs> passwords and not doing anything else but changing passwords. Like, you know, it's not just, you know, some companies, they have you just do one thing only and then you don't really get any experience. So, you know, it's just, that's what it is too. I'm just being honest with you. So. Yeah, um, that's kind of like you know, anybody else. Like right now, I'm done with my my talking. I was, was like talking like straight three hours. Anybody else have any tips or anything? Steven, what do you think? Is any tips for our our people? By the way, welcome to our channel, man. Your first time. I just want to welcome. Yeah. Thank you. I did. Yeah, I, I did was... watch your interview with Kev that day. I, just, <laughs> I was just yeah, I was, dead. <laughs> that was interesting. <laughs> that was that was funny. That's my first time. There. That day, that was like, uh, what, Sajib, we did what? Sajib is, is my one of my students. So we did like four and a half hours. And Sajib was like, are you going to go into KevTech? That day, the same day, he's like, are you going to yeah. go to the KevTech? And I'm like, hell no. <laughs> I was like, I just spent four and a half hours, Sajib. What do you, you want to kill me or what? I, I, was, I was following Kev uh, before. Uh, I actually sent him an email. I don't know if you remember. And he replied like right away. Uh, you know, I was struggling um deciding you know what to do then i emailed him i was like oh i need uh, this and that uh, and he replied me right away and i was really shocked because i did send an email to other people in youtube and nobody responded and he responded right away and i don't know if you remember or not if you if you look for my email you'll find the email yeah. oh yeah when, when people email me I, I don't i don't ignore you like i'm not gonna do that to you that's messed up but yeah, that's usually I do answer back. I, Wait, are you saying are you saying I'm bad that I ignore some something? No, like no, I'm saying that I'll get <laughs> I will get back to you. I will get back to you if you email me. Probably yeah. not not now, but maybe in a few hours. But I definitely will get back to you. So, if you email me. Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, uh, uh, I just want to thank you for that, man. <laughs> <laughs> no yeah again at the, at the last i want to tell people that some of our videos are too long and we talk about certain things that yeah it gets boring for some people who are technical enough but remember guys our our people who follow us there are a huge community that relies on this tiny mind information so what we request from other people is that this is not a normal channel where we just come and show products or show tricks or tools and stuff we rely too much on career like we we want to make sure that this uh, the information that we share helps you with your career so you have less stress at your work and you perform well. And the things that we've been through, uh, we would just want to share that experience. We are no different than you all. You all have different types of experience. You will, you, will, you will come across different types of experiences. 
Um, and we're no different than you. We're just, we went through some areas and we feel like those are something that we should share with you guys. So a lot of people, today I got a one, like I said, I from before the live training, I was telling Kev that somebody cut me out. He's like, you spent, you wasted my seven minutes of my, my life because you started the lab after seven minutes. But he didn't realize that there are so many people rely on that seven minutes of talking, me explaining things, telling people. So that's kind of like, I will always keep telling people that if you're coming to this channel for learning something lab specific, just, just move, uh, you know, forward that video. <laughs> you still won't find something pretty good, but still it's a step-by-step -step process. So maybe when you start taking part two, we just go straight into extreme advanced stuff. And then that that's where we're going to tell people the new people to go back to part one if they're complaining about advanced stuff now. You see how our pains are, right? When we start making these videos. So the first video is always got to be a big video. Kev, you want to say something? Yeah, the, 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 the problem is too, is that like me and Donish, we, we, we talk all the time. And the problem is, is that when we first started IT, we didn't have any kind of guidance. Like you have one, someone tells you go do labs. Then someone else tells you go get certifications. Then someone else tells you something else. So like, there's no guideline to how to get into IT. So that's the reason why we make these videos because someone is trying to advance their career or someone's trying to get a job in IT. That's basically what it is. Can I chime in on this as yes, the new guy? As a new but, guy, go ahead. You're absolutely right. Um, I have probably over a year of, I said a, a while ago, I, I told my girlfriend, you know what, I'm gonna get into IT. Uh, and so I was like, and I saw online, there's a ton of guidance, but it, the guidance is get the CompTIA A plus and then you, 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 you have a certificate and you don't have any job skills. You don't know what, I didn't know what the hell to do. I have two or three certifications. I got the Google, that by the way, that Google professional support thing, it took me like th three months to get through that. And I spent a lot of time every day and I, I think it's kind of useless. I don't want a bad mouth that I have the CompTIA A plus, the network plus. And I was actually, before I did uh, the live training with Donish, I was actually working on the Security Plus. And finally, I caught myself and I said, what am I doing? I'm going to have another certificate and I'm not going to have any practical, no experience. I don't know what to do. I have a piece of paper with nothing to do. So I was very glad. Uh, I, I first joined uh, Donish's website, Job Skills Share, and I was doing the free stuff. Then I did the next tier. And then I was like, you know what? Let me, I think I got what I got from this. Let me just do the live one-on-one. -on -one. And that was really what set me up, I think, for yeah, future success. Yeah, disclaimer, I paid Eddie. <laughs> yeah. But no, and then, and then I had, I had, you had suggested to check out KevTech. <laughs> yes. I and then I was like, all right. And then I found out Kev's from New I York. I suggest KevTech for everybody because it makes my out. job easy, right? Yeah, and he had a lot of good little tips. What? what I'm, like, I'm, like, I'm like, when I'm done with everything, I'm like, go to Kev Deck right there. <laughs> you know, and uh, yeah, but I was actually getting the Google. Okay. I, you, I, you guys are all live. There's so many live members. How many other live members are sitting here today who took the live? Sajib is here, Blanca here. Who else is it? Gigi, Leila? There's so many people sitting here. Are you guys there? Yes, yeah, I'm here. Okay. Let me ask I'm you guys, right here. Let me, let me ask you guys one question. Would you guys want to see... Kevtech doing a live training with us. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah. Yes, why not? Of Kev, course. Kev, there you go. You you gotta. <laughs> He's famous. <laughs> you got section too. Okay, I'm waiting. Because you know the thing about this is that of course um, I was telling I was talking to Kevtech that you we the community that we have is looking for a a, a skill with the, the, the skills that you have right now. You're already doing that on a YouTube um, and that's, we're doing the same thing for free, for free, no problem. That's something we're doing. But I was telling Keptech before this session that I have 45,000 people on website. I have 42,000 people on job skills share. Now you think about, you think about that. How many people come to us from Google and not go through the YouTube channel, right? So there's this, um, requirement there's this energy that has to be spent with all these new people to to tell them that they, there's something out there right the first thing is that and maybe steven might know this too that it's really hard to tell a new person that comptia is not enough right right because they somebody told them in the interview somebody sorry in the colleges or they got it from online or from other youtubers it's totally hard 
yet alone when you tell them, okay, we got a free courses and everything. But then of course, in our platform, we're also doing paid stuff, right? Then and it, it becomes a problem with a lot of times with me and with other YouTubers. Keptic is a different story right here. But other YouTubers are kind of partners with uh, other companies. So for them to say that there is something cool out there is hard because they're going to lose that that partnership with them, right? Like if it's a, let's say if this is a CompTIA paying them for for specific stuff and I say, hey, CompTIA, okay, CompTIA, what about CompTIA? CompTIA is like a 5% or 10% of our skills that we're teaching right here. Like, oh, look at this, the content right here. CompTIA represents only 5 to 10%, but on top of that, we're giving more than that. So then it becomes a conflict with other people, right? Mm -hmm. So it's very hard to, um, to basically tell people that, okay, there's something that you have to pay for. Now, if you look at these old live trainings, they're expensive, they're not cheap. But on top of what we are giving, Stephen, I don't know if you're part of new, what we're giving this is that we're giving practice lab for one year, which is library access, which you just saw right there. Then on top of that, we're giving 200 plus courses, video courses. These are all certification focused courses for one year. Then on top of that, we made our own 4,000 plus videos on these labs. We give that unlimited access. After one time payment, there, there, there you go. So all of these type of skills, and on top of that, me teaching them for, for five days and then doing their resume, all that kind of stuff concludes with that money, right? So you see, yes, we're gonna still continue to do all that YouTube, all that kind of stuff and everything, but there's certain things you can do for free. Like for example, me teaching Layla one-on-one, -on -one, me teaching Gigi one-on-one, -on -one, me teaching Eddie one-on-one. -on -one. All of these people are like coming and taking all these batches courses. That's something nobody can do that for free, right? I mean. That's why they came in here. So I tell Captag is like, maybe, yeah, he has a very strong mentality about, I wanna keep doing all this stuff for free. You, you can definitely do all this stuff for free. I'm not saying that you should change that. You, you I, and I'm there for you because I, I did 1000 plus videos. So you can see I'm, I'm in, in the same game, but there's certain group of people that are willing to pay you to, to do these things. So that's, as a, as a, as a platform owner, I, I'm open to your suggestions. They say, I wanna do my level one teaching, level two teaching, and you see all this, uh, uh, you know, this uh, content and you say, I want to do it because later on I can give my labs out. I can give this out. I can give virtualization labs out. Then, so, so then what happens uh, to you? You get to teach a bigger volume, uh, the people that wanted to pay for this stuff because they have now what? Resources, right? Where does the, the YouTuber get stuck, by the way? And I did this. The reason I'm saying this is because of my own personal experience, because I didn't start it platform first, I started for YouTube first, right? Where do I get stuck? Where did I get stuck? Because I wanted to do more than that. If somebody come to me, Suranam, Gigi, Leila, Eddie, all these people come to me and say, I wanna learn about Active Directory. I'm saying, yeah, go to take my video. But then with that video, I tell them, go take my virtualization video and do virtual box. Now everybody have a different systems around, all right? Everybody have laptops everywhere. So now what are they relying on? They're relying on their personal RAM. Their, all that stuff becomes a problem for a, uh, tutor or for a trainer. Now you can just say that I did my video, I'm done here. Or you can go and do the email back and forth with every single user and fix their issues while they're having it. So how do you resolve that issue? You need a system, right? For example, the, the one that I'm just showing right now is a 30 GB RAM that we give right here, like the ESXi. So Steven, you may be new, like we give this 30 GB RAM and 300 SSD for 30 days. So whatever I'm teaching, I have easy way to teach whatever I want to teach. This means I'm not relying on a user to bring their laptop and rely on their eight gigs of RAM where I know that they're gonna get stuck with that, right? So then either I have to tell a user to go buy a laptop that is 32 GB or 60 GB, 16 GB worth of it. How many people are gonna do that, right? So of course I got stuck right there. So this is where I basically tell Captain that maybe in future he can think about a content that some people are willing to pay and I will bring those type of people to you Hey, on, on the live, I'm not even, this is everything going live, right? And those people are gonna come to you from us. And say, hey, there you go. These people wanna pay. That, that's where like, of course, um, it's all personal decisions for a lot of people, but this is where I wanna go. This is where I wanna go with the YouTube community that if you are doing that, all that stuff on YouTube and I'm doing it with you, I'm gonna be there. I'm, I'm still doing it because I rely on that YouTube community. But there is a different community out there that wanna do these things. They wanna do this thing hands on. But when it comes to hands-on, then of course, it, 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 you got to have to tell a person that I don't have that resource, right? Mm. You got you to buy it yourself. Yeah, I see. So this is some... What is hard? Yeah, yeah go ahead, Sajib. Um, 
Never mind. I, I wasn't telling you. Sorry. Anybody else wanna wanna comment or anything? Hey Danish, how you doing? It's Dan. Yeah. Hey, my... <laughs> What's up, Dan? How are you? I'm good. How are you guys? I uh, you guys are doing a great job right there. Yeah. So Stan is also a member of mine. He finished his course. And Stan, how many? How long uh, did you work so far? So he's already working right now for a company. Um, how's it? How's it work? Yeah. Uh, it's it's great. Uh, lots of experience. Mastering so many cars a day. And so did did the did the training help you? By the way, like is it like is it helping you with it? Because I know you're this is your first IT job. Yeah, so they are, they are helping us with a lot of things. Like even for my first two days, we have like an on-site uh, a chat chat group on Skype, uh-huh. where uh, an experienced uh, help desk tech is right there to answer all the questions and you walk you through and they're pretty much the same questions from from the users. Yeah, and it gets repeated, and right? When you answer. Yeah, when you answer one to five questions, you should be able to answer the rest of the 10 or 15 questions. Like, if anyone is interested in looking for a job, that person should be scared because once you get there, you will be teach everything. Yeah. Like, they have their own app software, which they're using. Exactly. And, and, and that's what, that's what we tell you guys way. in the beginning, that you learn these basics, but a little bit more than basics, like A plus type thing. And then rely on your company yeah. because they're going to teach you this stuff. Most of the companies teach you this stuff, right? Now, of course, if you go to the company yeah. and you tell them that I have one year experience and I know about all this stuff and they ask you, can you do a ping and you can't do a ping, then of course, you just take your bag and get out of that company, right? <laughs> yeah. And what you guys are doing are pretty good. Like, you should know those names, like ticket and system. Even though we're using like a different, we're using like Pack 2000 for our ticketing system. But I, from your teaching, I know that I have to, when I receive a ticket, I need to uh, verify the, the user. I need to make sure I close my ticket because if I don't close that ticket, then I didn't do nothing. So that's, from that's, your, the, that's the teaching that I missed in my own college area because when people started teaching and most of these, look at this, like most of the, the people, when they start teaching about something, they always they're so fast. If somebody's teaching about PowerShell, they're extremely fast to show that I know this skill. But what they fail to usually, most of the time they fail to tell people that if I'm doing this, you can do this type of stuff in other areas in a different way. So when I say I do deployment through PDQ, that doesn't mean you need PDQ in your job. You need to know about this skill. Yes, right. Does that make sense? So when I teach you guys about the ticketing, that doesn't mean that I'm talking about just spice or ticketing system. It's always open, yep. close, assign the same process or any other ticketing system, right? Isn't that true for KevTech and Steven, right? The same ticketing system, same skills. So once you get, once you develop those type of understanding, then IT becomes pretty easy uh, because you know that every else, everything else just is like that. I just need to know about it. I know there's other products just like that. And that's it. That's what we rely on. Yeah, I think the biggest thing when you first start- yeah, I have this question. Go ahead, sir. Go ahead. So, uh, you know, I haven't been in this job for, for quite a long time, right? So, Danish, I just have like another employer who is paying me, I think, better than what I was receiving, you know, like $6 above what I was receiving. So, I don't know, like, <laughs> what can I do? Well, you got a lot of uh, professionals sitting here. Let's see what, so what's, what's your current title right now what are you doing right now i'm doing like uh well, are you yeah, full-time or are you in turn analyst uh i'm contract then another one which is coming is a uh, temp to hire temp to hire yeah and what's so what's the difference between between companies what kind of differences is there is that is that a service provider is that a government level? What is that? Like, what's that? Uh, both, both, both of them are all finance. 
they're all banks. They're all what, sorry? They're all financial institutions. They're banks. Another one is a bank, then the other one is a credit union. Yeah, Alex, I think he's, yeah, he's tier one. Um, what would you guys think? I'm kept, I guess, has a lot of experience in there too. Let's, let's just go one by one. And because I, I'm, I mean, it's going to be kind of like a, there's too much missing right now, right? Like you have to kind of like maybe the benefits and, you know, the, the commute, all that stuff to me, that's going to be kind of the main things for me. But let's, let's find out from Kev Tech and Steven and other people. No, I'm, the, you, I'm the same way. It would, it would, it depends on how much you're getting paid. Which one, which company, like, you know, always to travel as well. How far, how far away is it from where you live? Also depends the benefits. Also depends the schedule, what your schedule is going to be like, because your schedule might be good or it might be pretty bad. Um, it also depends on other things like, like the, the, like, is there opportunity to grow in that, in that company or is there no opportunity to grow? You know, you got to look at all these things. It's not just, you know, not just one thing you gotta look at a bunch of different things so i don't know if steven wants to say anything yeah i pretty much agree with that um you gotta feel comfortable i mean if you i mean this other company you know if it's worth maybe going to interview and just to see what it, if you can get a feel for what the company is and uh, the one that you're working for now i mean you're just a contractor so you can go and you can you can definitely go and interview somewhere else um that's definitely not a problem this don't i, would, I wouldn't say anything to the other company but you know, just keep that under wraps. Um, but definitely go and you I mean go and check it out if you feel comfortable there. If you see more promising future, if they are talking up a little bit, um, maybe worth investing. I mean, that's that that comes down to you know experience too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. My ta my take on this is going to be uh, like this. Basically, like everybody has. I mean, for first, um, you would have to do do more research and ask more professionals too. But my thing is this: that since you're so brand new to technology, right? In the beginning, you kind of you will have to give up on certain. Like if I was like, let's say you, I would give up on certain desires. Like, okay, they're paying me six dollars more because you're so new that you're trying to learn these things, and you, you just spend like what a few weeks, right? Like two, three weeks, right? And you just got into technology, yeah. yet, right? So my thing would be to, if money is not a big thing right now for you, then maybe you go with this, right? Because what you don't want to also, uh, what you don't want to also like making a habit of just leaving like that once you're so new, because they may, you may even lose a job very quickly over there based on maybe they just didn't like something or you didn't have that kind of skills. So that's going to disappoint the hell out of you, right? Because now you lost a job that you were pretty comfortable with. They got you, they're training you. And because you went somewhere else, new people, new connection is hard. I mean, human nature, right? Even if I go to a new place, I would be like a little shaky, right? So my suggestion would be if money is not a big thing, you stay where you are and you kind of like close a door on other offers for now. As soon as you spend, let's say, even three months or maybe six months, you spend that kind of time, that's where you realize that do you have opportunities in this job currently? Because a lot of people will give you opportunities and it's the same job. If you don't see opportunities, that's where you make that other calls. Okay, let me let me look for more opportunities because now you have six months of experience, right? That's gonna be my take on that. Yeah, you have you have the uh, you have the experience now, so then you could you could take your leave after that. So I agree. I agree with what Don is just saying. You don't want to just leave like that. I've seen people job hop, and then when I start asking them about that, they, they get very shaky. So you don't want to be job hopping all over the place. But also, you 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 just got a new job, and you're just starting out in IT. So you know your expectations are not going to be extremely high. It has to be a little low. You can't go above above and beyond and ask for a lot of money. You know you're not going to get that when you first start. It takes time. It takes patience, and also it takes experience, and also it takes you have to be in a company for a while, you know, not, I'm not saying for five years or 10 years, you have to be in the company for a few months, you know, you can't just leave a company like that and then go to another company because it kind of looks, uh, it doesn't look responsible either. So you got to be careful with all that. I'm just, you know, I'm just saying, so. You know, another thing too, when you first start at, when like you're in this job now and with that, the skills that you just learned, when you first start that job, you walk in, you don't know what the heck's going on with the network the people you got to get to know the people 
how the network works. Once you understand how the net, how they do things, then you can apply all the stuff that you learned. And then, then that is when they notice you more, I think, because then, you know, you think, oh yeah, I learned that and this, I learned that and that. And now you can start applying that to your job. And that's when the bosses take notice to that. And they say, oh, and then all of a sudden, then all of a sudden you just take off. You're like, wait a minute, this is really easy now. And now you can show them a lot more. And that's maybe then you might get some more like, you know, responsibility, but to get to know the network, every network is different from that, from one company to another. You got to learn what they do. Once you learn what they do, you just take off. And then all of a sudden you may find it be boring. You're like, yeah, this is really boring. I'm not really learning much here. That's when maybe you can go and say, take that experience, take it somewhere else and do the exact same thing. Learn the network, take off, you know, it just, you know, your skills just go nuts. Like I'm getting better and better and better, but that's how you learn. You've got to, you have to go through those hard knocks, which is tough at the very beginning, but once you get past that point, you know, you can, you, you pretty much have a lot of confidence and that's when you can say you're actually professional. Like that's when you build up your professional experience, you know, I think anyway. And I think those are some great points that you both discussed and Steven, I agree with you hundred percent. Like that's where you're, you're, when you get to that point, when you spend that time and you say that I, you develop these skills, you are at a different level. At that time, you make your own pathways, by the way. You don't rely on a entry level advices anymore. You rely on more of a, um, you know, other advices where people are already in certain areas and now you're specifically going into a specific specialization where I want to, okay, I want to go there. This is going to be my life. And now I want to get into that stuff. So it's a different level of confidence. So that's why we say, when I, when I said, my suggestion was to stay, learn, grab, and then act on it. That's kind of like what I'm looking at it. But of course, there are certain people saying that what if the contract is, contract ends, but temp to hire is long-term. But it comes to, again, that point, right? My point is that, you're too new to make those type of decisions right now. Even if a contract is small, they already trusted you. They already gave you what you need to learn. They're already comfortable with you. So that kind of, that kind of uh, relationship to build an IT is always a hard thing. So there's a lot to uh, you know, lose that. And, I, and of course, we're not a magician right here, right? If I give this advice to a person that, hey, this con this, leave this one and go to attempt to hire because that seems a little longer, they may, that may sound like a perfect solution, but it's, sometimes it doesn't work. Like for example, I gave a solution to one of the, the user where she got two offers and what was, one was a smaller company, one was a bigger company. So it seemed like to me that bigger company was like not a right choice to my, to my advice. And I was like, go for the smaller company because you're gonna learn a lot and all that kind of stuff. She went into a smaller company, the small company, uh, you know, squeezed the hell out of her, right? Because she, they were like, do this, do that, do that. And that and why she turned out to be a nightmare. She, she lost a job. But I, and the, the, the reason she lost a job because she was not a, she didn't do the whole proper training with us too. So she, she went with a higher level end job. And I always tell people that if you land a job like that, trust me, it's 50-50. You're gonna either lose a job or you're gonna either stay on your job. <laughs> so Stan, I mean, these are the suggestions. I <laughs> think at the end, you, get, you gotta make your own decision, right? Yeah, thank you very much. I think they were all great contributions and I can now reason from your contributions and know the right choice to pick right now. Yeah, I know. Somebody else asked a question over here too. You, you got to yeah, keep go in mind too. You got to keep in mind that you, you just got that job and IT, getting your first job is extremely hard to get your first job in IT. So you yeah, got to yep. keep that in mind too. So you don't, you don't just leave a job because it's once you leave that job, or if you go to the other job, you don't know. You don't know how the other job's gonna be. You don't know if you're gonna get laid off in one month or two months or whatever. But getting the first job is extremely important. That's essential to your to your growth as an IT person. That's also a, you're essential to grow in a career path. So getting your first job in IT is extremely important. And I'm saying that because once you get that first job, and I tell people this all the time, people look at me like I'm crazy, or people look at me like, yeah, yeah, you're right, Kevin, you're right. Once you get that first job in IT, there's there's no, nothing stopping you. You just keep going up and up and up and up and up. But you have to get that first job first and get that experience first, and then you can move up after that. And you have to have a lot of patience. You know, it, you, 
it's just like when you exercise and work out, you know, you don't get the results you want in one day. You have to keep being persistent. You have to keep doing it. You have to keep doing it over and over again. So same with your same with your job. You got to keep doing it. Keep having patience. Learn as much as you can, and eventually you can move on to like help desk level two or server admin or whatever you want to do. You know, you gotta have patience for that. But also, it's your first job, so you know you gotta you, you can't put uh, all your expectations on everything. You know, trying to move into something else, and you know, it's not, it doesn't happen. You can't be you can't be help desk and then be a CEO in one day. You know, it doesn't work that way. You know, it's just. You gotta, you gotta be patient. That's what it is. And that's what, that's what that's I believe right. in, you know? You know put, yeah, go ahead. You'll go. You know, to put that into respect, you know, proper perspective too. When I first got, when I first got my A plus, my network plus certification from Contia back in 2010, I got a job working for a insurance company called uh, CNA. And I went up there, it was a six month contract working with IBM. And so that was her managed service provider. So I walked in, there was only like a six month contract. I ended up being there for five years. So, I mean, it was a month to month thing, but they thought I was doing a great job. So like, it just came into a five year contract. So I actually stayed for the whole entire length of IBM's contract with the actual company. But I learned so much about movement. Like I moved company from company A to company B. You know, I moved them from one spot to another. All that experience built up in five years, which was fantastic. Um, but the first six months of me walking in there, I was scared. I, I was just fresh out. I didn't know what the heck I was doing. No customers like, get the heck away from me. Who are you? Uh, I'm Steven. I just started here. I don't want you touching my computer. I don't know who you are. But it took like six months to a year until they're like, oh, Steve's here. Get up out, get up out of your seat. Steven, you know, come on and sit down. Fix my actual machine. You've got to build up that rapport with the customer, which is very, very important. They have to trust you. So if you're there for a very short time, they may not trust you. You got to build up that rapport. You got to build up that trust. Once yeah. you build up that trust, it's all gravy from there. And, then and, and, that's, them them. and that's something, even when we are doing technical learning, like I tell people that, okay, we, you learned about software deployment skills, like all the level one, probably in the beginning, most of the time when they come and take our training, they don't know about these skills, right? They're like, oh, that's so cool. I can just deploy the software. So with that, I give this warning, Stephen and Kev, that even if you know about deployment and if you're brand new to that IT job, you still need to go down, sit with the person and do it manually, talk to the person, uh, create that, uh, you know, uh, create that uh, relationship with that person uh, because they will hate it. They will hate it if you're brand new and you say, let me just deploy this uh, Zoom because I already know about deployments. They would definitely, even if you know, if you, you knew this stuff, they will hate it. They're not, they're not gonna like this stuff, trust me. So I tell people that, hey, you, you gotta, you gotta de- this, this, what Stephen is saying that building a relationship is extremely important, specifically in the, the beginning area. Later on, they know you so much, they know like, Kev Tech, they, they, he know, uh, the CEOs and everybody, they know, everybody knows them. So let me, let me take care of it. Later on, let me take care of it. Or somewhere like, let me take care of it, right? So he can always use his skills and everything to get the job done now. But he doesn't have, and sometimes he may want to go back and let them see him because, because he wants to build that relationship with them. So sometimes even if you know skills, that doesn't mean you're going to bypass that customer relationship thing. But if you start doing that, you're going to, you're not going to be in a good position for after a long time, people are still going to be okay. Yeah. But this person is too technical, but that doesn't mean anything. I mean, he's very uh, like, he doesn't even respond to us or he doesn't even talk to us. You see, that's just the human nature, right? There, there are people that are above us right now and specifically in IT, we're working for some company, either we're working for some owners, we're working for some CEOs. We're working for that. I mean, unless somebody, you are your CEO on your own, that's a different story, but I'm working as a system. I'm still for companies, even though I have my own platform, I'm still working for other companies. I still have to respect them. I still have to make a relationship with them. I know that that's, even if they're paying me for a job, that's still, I know that's my business. To me, that's my business, right? My skills are my business. So why would I lose that, right? I need to build a better relationship. And that's that's the key point right there, right? Yeah, I was gonna, I was gonna add to that because I saw you were talking about that because yeah, that, that happens to me because I, I work with the CEO of the company and I work with important people in my job and I have that build trust relationship with them. And because of that, be, be, because of that, they don't even contact help desk or IT support. They just contact me and I fix their problems. They don't contact anyone else. They just contact me. And then when they know that it's me, 
Yeah, oh, Kev, it's Kevin. Oh, Kevin will fix it for me. It's okay. He'll fix it. And then, and even with the 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 chief, the chief technology officer, the head of IT infrastructure, um, they 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 made fun of me to the point that they put me in in Cisco call manager, my caller ID as Superman. So when people call me, I come up as Superman because because um, I just. You know, it's a joke. It's just because the people find me find me that I'm super helpful. You know, but it's because of the relationship. I build relationships with all the people that I work with, so they got used to dealing with me. And you know, and and also part of part of if you work in management, also part of management when you work in management, because I, I I do deal with some management stuff. Also, when you work in management, um, it's like when you go in a restaurant, right? And you go and order food, and then you you see a new staff every single day. You don't have the same staff over and over again. You know. You can't build that relationship with the staff because there's always, you guys are constantly hiring new people, you know? I don't know if that makes sense. Well, you're always constantly hiring new people. So you see yeah. new faces, you see new people, and then you're like, what the hell's going on over here? Why, I, I didn't, didn't this guy take care of me? Why is there a new person here? You know, like, and it keeps constantly rotating and changing, you know, that, that's the same with IT. When you, when you go into a job, you don't build a relationship, you leave and then have to hire another person. And then like, I just got I just got used to Donish or I just got used to Kevin taking care of myself. Who the hell is this person over here? Why the hell should I trust you with my computer? I don't even know who you are. You're gonna break my computer. Don't touch my computer. So you know that does happen. So I'm just you know, I'm just putting information out there like Don. I'm adding to what yeah. Donish said. So I'm gonna go over some of the questions quickly. Um there's there's some questions like, hey Donish, uh, for someone who landed a job in this lockdown phase. Is he expected to deliver straight away? Because obviously you can't be with the, with the, with your trainer normally. Any tips? What do you guys think about this question? Um, I mean, my answer to this is going to be: your when you get hired as a new professional or anywhere, any job, they don't expect you to know everything right immediately, right? That's what I would think. I would think like if I, was, I hire somebody as a level one, I just need to know if can you do a password resets? Can you assign the tickets properly? If you're not doing it properly, then I'll probably call you. Maybe I'll tell you, hey, this is what, can you can you study these groups or can you study these depar departments? I'll train you. That's what I would do. If you're a brand new person and I got, I hired you in this specific emergency situation, I know everybody's going to be stressed out. So I'm not going to even stress, uh, I won't put more stress on a brand new person. That's what I would do. I don't know about, what do you guys think, Kev, like this question? For someone who landed a job in lockdown, is he expected to deliver straight away? No, you, no, you're not. You're not. You're gonna. You, you're not gonna. You, 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 you'll probably have training. You'll probably have training with one of your co colleagues at work. You don't know. They probably do like a Skype training or a Zoom training or whatever. They'll probably do a video training with you of some sort because of this whole thing. You know what's going on right now. So they'll probably do some sort of training with you. But also, part of that you have to put in the work as well. You know, you have to. You have to learn the ticketing system. Maybe figure out what kind of issues you'll have. A common common issues you have day to day. You know, ask the right questions, talk to your manager, figure out what you need access to, you know, stuff like that. So, but you're not going to be expected to know everything. You're going to make mistakes here and there, but you're, you're going to learn as you're, as you're doing it, you know, to answer your question. I agree with that. I mean, you just can't go in and you have to know exactly what applications you can do. What can, I mean, what can you download, what you can't download, you know, all the security stuff. I mean, if you just go in there thinking, oh, I can just do like, like I do at home. Yeah, that's not gonna work. Uh, but, you know, you gotta go in there. But you know, but you know where it's gonna be a problem. If you lied on your resume, you got the job oh. with three years experience. You're definitely getting fired. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that would be a problem. If somebody lied and you got the job and they they think, hey, we got a really nice experienced IT professional. Keptech has five years experience, and Keptech goes there. Hey, can you research my Active Directory class? And you call it like, how do you? What what is Active Directory? Dude, you put. Four years of experience on your resume. We're paying you seventy-five thousand dollars. Are you kidding me? Right? That's not gonna work. Somebody put a lot of good comments. Yeah, with that, I would, yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, Stan. With that, I would say uh, I just got a job too uh, during this time, and I'm actually being trained from home. So we are kind of mm -hmm. using like conference call and using Skype meetings. Perfect. They walk you through step by step what you have to be doing to end users. Is another comment somebody did, uh, um, I think Xavier, uh, sorry for mispronouncing your name, Lou John. It took me one year to to be a quite comfortable at my current job indeed takes time. So, you know, this this 
taking a year long or six months or something like that all depends on what do you follow or who do you follow. To be honest, the people who land a job, let's say with their no, no following, no guidance or no YouTube type of, uh, you know, like KevTech or our channel, yes, you're going to take long, long, not even one year. Some people even take five years to get comfortable with their job. The reason for that is that they get stuck in one infrastructure, one area, and in, even in one infrastructure, they may be given access to very specific things. So they never get out of that, right? So of course, for this type of uh, skills, you can learn it fast. To be honest, you can learn it fast. It's not like you, it, it takes you that kind of time. Some people, be like they're really good in six months. I have one person who uh, was working in Best Buy, landed a job with $35,000. And then in six months, he landed a job about $75,000. So that's a huge gap right there. Like, boom, just changed it. Why? Because he was following something that maybe after me, he was following some other people too. So he was doing, he developed that mentality that why not I follow some of the people out there that are sharing these skills. So it fast forward these things. Like in IT, like I said, it's information technology. I share with you, you cash on it, you learn more. That's it. You learn something, you learn the skill, you cash on it. Is this, this is it. Because throughout my life, what I have done is where I struggle is when I did a repetitive work and I never go outside to find a solution, a better solution, because I was doing repetitive, 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 repetitive. That, that's, not a, that's not a skill learning. That's just you wasting your time. That's what I believe in. If, you, if I do the repetitive password resetting for five years, that doesn't make me a better technician to do password resets. And I cannot consider myself to, I have five years of experience password resetting. That's what Kev said, right? But I can make my processes better that I know certain ways to do Active Directory even more than password resets. So that cash on that, that skills. So what I'm basically saying is that you don't get, you don't want to get stuck in one area because you can have 10 years of experience as an IT person in a help desk and you still won't be even near a person who has two years or three years of experience of working in a multiple environments and doing some different things in help desk. Why do we say that MSPs are better technicians than me? Like I'm, I'm not MSP anymore. I do have certain things going on, but an MSP sys admin is way better than me. Why? What's the reason behind? Because that, that MSP is seeing more than I do on a daily basis. He's seeing or she's seeing or touching different infrastructures than I do. So that doesn't mean that, you know, me spending 13 years as a sysadmin or 20 years in a sysadmin, I'm a better sysadmin than a person who spends five years. So it's all about your mind, right? You gotta be, you gotta be, when I say, when I tell people that you gotta do proactive learning, proactive troubleshooting, proactive skills learning, that's what I meant by that. That you go and grab it from other people and you catch on. We're teaching it to you. We, we don't mind that. But a lot of people have this mentality, specifically in the U.S., because I came from a different country, Pakistan, and I came to U.S. In Pakistan, it's a little different thing. People are kind of a little open to share skills. Like they will sit with you. They will spend a lot of hours. And in the U.S., it's not the same thing. And I agree with that. I, I don't, I don't want to say anything bad about it. It's just that how it, it works in the U.S. Everything in the U.S. is like, I learned it the hard way. So why aren't you doing it? I'm not your dad or I'm not your brother or something. I'm just going to sit with you and do all this kind of stuff. Like that. Right, Stephen? Like oh, this mentality was even even hardcore when we had a sysadmin versus network engineer fight versus security people. Everybody was like separate and everybody had a very negative thing about each other. Like they, they will not teach skills to each other. And that was that was made us to come out and blow out on YouTube. I'm like, this thing is crazy. Like I, I got to... I got to talk about this stuff, you know? And that's what Kev is doing. Right? You know, there's so many things that he talked about, like in a in specific in his careers, that you won't see this. You won't, you won't see this even if you're working. So yeah. Somebody has to talk about it. Yeah, people seem to be afraid to share their skills. Um, when I was working with the St. Louis people, the, uh, you know, a lot of the young guns, as I, as I like to call them, the young guys just came on board. And I was teaching them and they're like, oh, wow. You know, they were really impressed. They were like, oh, thanks for taking, you know, teach me this stuff. Just kind of like broadening their minds. I mean, they're fresh out. They're scared. They don't know what the heck is going on. So it's like, here, look at it this way. Do it this way. Do it that way. Oh, that, that's like a lot easier. Well, don't do it the long way. This is how you really do it. You know, instead of solving a ticket in 20 minutes, solve it in 10 minutes. And it's the same. You get to the same point. But it's that, again, learning the systems, learning how to do tickets. When you first start, it's gonna, it may take you a half an hour. Exactly. But then when you learn the network, it may take you only 10 minutes. Like, wait a minute, I know how to do that. Plus, 
getting to know people on the network side, security, um, ping your friends. Hey, can you reset something on the Citrix back end for me? Because I don't have access to that. Oh, sure. You know, is a Citrix se you know, session hung? Can you just go in there and, you know, take it out, wipe, you know, wipe it out or change a password? If you know friends, you can get things done a lot quicker. If you don't, you got to go to the help desk, get the ticket escalated, blah, blah, blah. Instead of just going, hold on one second, let me see if Jim's out there. All right, hey, Jim, I, I, I like, I need your help. All right, hold on one second, Steve. All right, done. Have him try it. All right, done. All right, see you guys it's later. Such a, it's such a perfect example you just shared today. You know? Like, for example, I'll give you one example today that one, uh, so there's like three help desk people managing 300 people, or about 300 people. So what happened was that they, that situation with now, like COVID, people took their laptops, they took it home. And then of course that cash password issue came in. So the, 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 here's look at the communication right here. The help desk staff was so open to us that, hey, is there, like usually when we have solutions, I already did like, you know, the, their solution is like this. They bring the laptop back to the network. You have to bring it back to the office, connect it, get the cash going on and <laughs> laptop has to go back. So if, if you have a good, uh, you know, good communication, so this is how it happens, right? Help this, I see there's a problem going on. Me having a great relationship with help this because I've been in help, the same help this, right? I'm, I'm, I'm kind of like helping them at the same time. So with that connection, even personally, because they were so nice to me and they were so always involved with me and I'm always involved with them because I want I never want to lose my help the skills, right? So both way works. So I realized that there's a problem I was like, okay, guys, I think you guys need a solution. Let's put SBL on top of these AnyConnect. Do this from home. You don't need to bring it to the office, right? And we we deploy the solution in like 30 minutes. That's it. We'll firewall, bam, turn it on. Everything. And the help those guys are like, man, today you saved my day, right? Like, we don't need to wait on them or do all this crazy stuff with people to do all this stuff. And this, you see, what you're saying is that connection between the different departments can make magic happen because there are different people with different skills. And then they are, I need certain certain skills from them. Then I'm okay, hey guys, I think I'm losing my skill set over here. Can you guys tell me what are you guys doing with Windows 10 these days? Uh, okay, this is this is exactly what we're doing. So you see, they spent, let's say six hours to learn something and they implemented it. Now in 30 minutes, they sit with me and show me the skill. You see how quickly I grab those skills. So it's like give and take, give and take, right? So it's like, it's like that. You gotta, you gotta work with each other. Simple. Yes, that. you have to, especially today. Because exactly. it changes like tomorrow will be something different out there. And then, then we have to get to know it in the desktop support. Like we have to get to know this or however, oh, we just implemented this new software last night. Nobody told us about it. Oh, well, you have to learn it now and how to teach the users. Yeah. Okay, sure. <laughs> no problem. Uh, so communication sometimes lacks a little bit in, I think, the IT world especially when it comes up to the higher, you know, the upper management communicating down to level two desktop support, communicating down to the help desk, you know, and it's kind of like, just like with, uh, we had a thing, an issue a couple months ago with um, BitLocker. Like we could access the BitLocker password inside of Active Directory and the help desk knew this. So I'm like, wait a minute, how in the world is, is the help desk knowing this and we can't figure it out? So I was like trying to, I so I kind of ran through it like a couple of times, and I finally figured out what they were doing. I'm like, wait a minute, they're going they're going in the Active Directory, they're going into the advanced features, they're going up to the dom to the computer, uh, 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 into the computer account or something like that. They're right clicking and they're going into somewhere else, and it's and like it says it right there. I was like, there it is. I'm like, that is how help this is doing this. So I'm thinking to myself, well, okay, so they didn't learn a new skill. They just were told that to go into that area, but now that we knew. We didn't have to call up help desk yeah. and do what they did. So it's exactly. kind of like, we just kind of like learned something. <laughs> it's the communication. Um, here's another question. Hey, Danish, uh, I have a desktop support interview tomorrow. What kind of questions should I be aware of? So here's, here's your, here's your ports, answer right here. Ports, ports, <laughs> right, Kevin? <laughs> ports, what is ticketing? What is Active Directory? What is Office 365? Stuff like that. People are going to throw all these stuff to you. So here's a, here's a solution for you. You go to jobskillshare.org slash free. And then of course, the first thing is that if you have not gone through our courses, all of our courses are like interview questions, by the way. When we teach something, we talk about, we based on that, we teach like, we talk about 
ticketing system, we're inside the course, we're saying these are the type of questions you're going to be coming across. But of course, let's say you don't have the time. This is tomorrow. and You can never finish 80 hours of content in, in tonight. Probably you'll die for your interview. So what you need to do, you need to come over here, click on IT support, resume, apply for jobs. And you will click on this play link. And this is going to take you to this course. This is a free course. And in that you have all the interview questions and all the responses and all the, the people who actually have landed a job. So let me show you, and this will be kind of in combination with CavTech uh, videos. So you go to this link right here. So if I show you right now, uh, probably this one right here, IT career question, advice and success stories. You open this, you don't even have to register guys. You open it right now, look at this, how cool this is. People who land a job in our platform they have a responsibility. When they land a job through us, we help them, they have to help back. They come back and they show the whole process of interview. Phase one, phase two, this is what they asked me. This is what they did in the phone. They did this and look at this. If you come down, these are multiple people have landed a job. All these are interview questions. Look at this, a whole one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 questions right there. You're coming here and look at this, another one. There's 12 questions right here. These are the people who have landed a job. They have told you what they're going to ask you and how they responded. So focus on here. Second thing, of course, the course is bigger than that. The course covers a lot. Second thing, I would highly recommend to come all the way down. Look at this right here. Who's this guy right here? Who's this guy? This is called, he's called Keptech. <laughs> so you come to this right here, this, this playlist. You're going to come over here. You're going to click on this. And this guy is showing you every single thing that people are asking you about interview. Of course, you go to his channel. He has a different playlist about interview question too, right, Keptek? Yeah, so if you go to his channel, he has a different uh, question, inter uh, uh, IT career questions. And on the bottom, this guy is specifically talking about interview questions in a very detail. I mean, if you feel like you don't like my voice, and if you feel like sometimes maybe you don't, <laughs> If you don't like my voice or you don't like the way I talk, then go to these channels. This guy is also pretty good at uh, interview stuff. And the way he's doing things is really nice. He, he has this nice uh, text, everything going on. So I'm sure after this, uh, if you still miss something, that meaning you're, you're missing learning. You can prepare yourself for 500 interview questions. That doesn't mean anything. If you don't know what is Active Directory and you are preparing yourself for what is Active Directory from someone with just like a little text over here, that's, that's, you'll never be prepared. You'll never be prepared. I can tell you that. You'll probably land a job. You'll never be prepared for a job then. So of course, again, at the end, then uh, you, you have to come back and uh, then kind of do these things. Any, any other suggestion for you, for this person who's taking an interview tomorrow, guys? Yeah, what do you, do you have any, any suggestion for him tomorrow? <laughs> His interview is tomorrow. <laughs> A lot of videos and a lot of stuff to go over, but I would probably focus on um, if it was me going doing that job interview. I would focus on what are the job requirements that they they're asking for. So we usually they give you a list of 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 the requirements of that job or what you what they're asking for, and I would study based on that. So like if they're asking for Active Directory, I study that. They're asking for password reset, I study that. You know the requirements of the job. So usually if you have an IT, if you're working with a company as an IT job recruiter or it's a website or a company or a company you're applying for directly, typically they get you, they give you all the requirements, like the, the Prosecco, it's all the requirements of the stuff that you need to know that you should be studying for that job interview. So like they ask, oh, we require this, we require that, we require this. So I would study those things. So whatever they're asking for is what I would study for. I'm not sure if that makes sense, but that's basically what I would do. And make sure you're, you, you know your course. Well-known <laughs> course. Yes. I'm telling course. you. They are the freaking, I'm telling you, that's something that stumps you. Because, you know, yeah, I mean, cool. okay, Danish, when was the last time somebody asked you about port numbers? In the job or the interview question? In the job. In the job, like, I mean, I don't know. I don't even remember. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> Isn't that amazing? I, I, I sort of got, I, I, you know, whatever. I, you know, you know, seriously. That's, I mean, uh, I, I just don't know. I just, you know, I mean, the well-known ports. I mean, 
Okay, like what is what is a what is a port for DNS? <laughs> I have no idea. Really? <laughs> Fifty three. How about I'm like? Gonna, now here's the thing. Here's the thing. As a sysadmin, if you don't know about ports, how can you even do your job? Like for example, if I had to deploy a uh, FTP right now, F an right. FTPS, and right now these days nobody's using FTP twenty one port, right? So nobody's using that now. It's like, okay, you gotta go with FTPS. If I don't know the ports of FTPS, I don't know how it works. How can I even deploy that? How can I, then I need to go to the firewall and I need to turn it on. How can I even understand the firewall if I don't know? That's the when you just Google it quick. Oh, hold on, port and, and, to, and to be honest, like I say that some of the ports, when you don't work on it on a daily basis, then huh? you don't remember that. Of course you gotta go and Google it, right? Yeah. That's, the, that's the reality of our job too. We know, like some people are really good with, um, uh, you know, remembrance of these things, like, you know, to, uh, some of the namings too. To be honest, I'm one of those type of people, I rely on my own skills and I, I, I take my time. If somebody call me and say, okay, hey, we need to deploy this or this, and what is, what is the, what is the, they even tell me, what is the DNS server for? I'm like, hold on, give me a second. And to be honest, I take my time. That's how I'm, my mind works now because I'm, my mind is so shaked up with so many things that I don't work that way anymore. And that's, the, to be honest, in, in some of the areas, that's not required unless you work for certain areas where you get to talk to people and you're quickly responding. That's a different thing. Then you gotta be, you gotta have a nice chichi in front of you. You gotta have, do you really think every IT person knows all of these crazy ports out there? No. I can guarantee you if someone knows no. that I'll give them a price right there. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah do, you, do you know every port out there? Huh? <laughs> I, thought no. he, I thought he Hell said no. that. Hell no, hell no. <laughs> So, you know, it's the thing is this, that with the interviews, yes, you got to know them. And specifically what Steven is saying, you got to know the basics. If somebody put an HTTPS.jobsforshare.org and they say, what is the port? And you don't know how to answer that port, then you getting the job becomes a little hard. Why? Because they say, you don't know the two basics out there. If somebody says, HTTP.jobsforshare.org, why am I not seeing the port? Why is that? If you don't know that port, and it's too basic, but nobody's gonna test you as level one. Tell me which port does LDAP works and which port that Azure and Azure gets you work and that of course, that's not gonna happen. That is not gonna happen. I mean, if that happens, then that, I'll tell you what, there's, there's a problem in this area too. Then this person who's taking the interview is too hard on certain areas that he thinks that I should be really focusing on that. Area. Like, you know, you know, some people are really focused on like, tell me, is this a static IP address or is this a DHCP address, right? So that's too basic. But if somebody says, hey, tell me what are the differences between an Active Directory primary one and this one, a replication from a level one, I'm like, that person is going too far, right? That's where we, we, we kind of like said, okay, you know what? You don't need to go to that level of answering, uh, sorry, getting a question from people because that's where people, a lot of people get stuck. So it's always about who's taking your interview guys. But the, what I will, I will agree with Steven in a way that you do need to know the basics of ports. If you don't know the basics, you're not getting a job. So, Naso, wait, wait, you changed me now, Naso. I guess I'll focus, Naso. Yeah. Okay, sorry? Yes. We're having a lot of guys get locked. Yeah, we lost them. I think I'm having a hard time. <laughs> I don't know what he was saying. So, so yeah, I mean, Stephen, to be honest, I, I agree with you 100%. I mean, you need to know the basics of ports. And that's why if you go to these uh, practice lab, they have like in, in, in A+, plus, they have a full session. They have a full session about- Sorry, Danish, I, I was trying to- Yeah, yeah go ahead. Yeah, sorry, I was just dis discussing with someone here. I was trying to tell how important your site is and uh, there are many free courses uh, one can get when they register to your to so, job skill share. So let me, I'll, since we, I was speaking in my language, so I didn't, I didn't. So since we're talking about this, let me show you here. If you go to this um, IT fundamental E1.0, Stephen, what we did is what we do, what we tell people is that even before you take our live training or any training, we make them come over here and they have to go through this 40%, which is kind of like freely available. You don't even have to register. 
if you look at my content right here, they have to, they have to, have to finish this core fundamental learning. Starts from what? What is a network type? LAN, WAN, all that kind of stuff, right? Then it goes to OSI TCP models. Then it goes to what is a hub and all that kind of stuff. Then it goes to TCP UDP. Then it goes to IPv4, IPv6. Then it goes to DNS and DHCP. They got to understand this at the higher level, theoretical level, right? Then what happens, Stephen, is like first, before that, we kind of break it down to transitioning into IT. What is the real world scenarios? We show examples. We talk about mixed infrastructures in IT, uh, you know, some of the, you know, uh, the cloud uh, infrastructures and stuff like that. Then look at this on the bottom, they need to finish another theory, which there's no access right now because that's what we give. They need to finish a full uh, to, uh, theoretical course from a different company, which we give in our membership. So that's the 200 uh, plus courses that we we're talking about. But because of that 200 courses access, we specifically picked this CompTIA. And that's why we say that's only a 10% right there. You see that? So first we break it down to them then we get into CompTIA. That's where they hit the ports and all that kind of stuff, right? They learn that theory, you know, stuff. But on top of that, Practice Lab also have a hands-on course. So on top of that, Stephen, we make videos on top of these labs. So if you look at this right here, this is where we come over here. Look at this right here. If you come to command line tools, aren't these the commands that people ask in interview questions? NSLOOKUP, ping, tracer, IP config. Aren't these the one that you always see from people that are asking you, GP results? Yes. Right? So yep. you see, uh, to answer your question, that, well, that's why I didn't answer you. I'm like, I don't know about ports because this is the level of information. <laughs> this is the level of information that they have to go through in our platform. And that's just what? That's just fundamental. So that's, that's not it. This is just the fundamental to get started in our platform. That's why we say that we are too rigorous when it comes to telling people that you are a certified from jobscashare.org. Because after this, they have to go to another course, which becomes a more technical course. And that's where they learn about all that deployments, troubleshooting, advanced troubleshooting, and certain products that we use online. And some of the, the things that you don't see in CompTIA and they won't be able to pick them up because those are products. But for us, it's important. And then after that, we get them into more ticketing. And then once they finish all that stuff, then of course, then there are certain things that I have not covered. Then I'll say, hey, CapTech is your man right there. He finished this. I am not, I'm not teaching this stuff. He has a goal there. <laughs> so when he, so just imagine if somebody have that kind of education, Stephen, to be honest, they can always counter uh, something that they don't remember. Like I said, I have so much of experience in this area, but I don't remember certain things right now. If somebody asked me about some very basic stuff, right? I might not remember, but on top of that, I can counter it with other things that their person then knows, okay, this is a memory problem. This is not something that I should be really testing him on this. Side. So when, when our members kind of go through all this stuff and they forget about a very basic port out there, they have something else to counter it on. They do well, they do well in other areas or they make their story in the beginning so good that it's sellable to a lot of people. And it is. Like I know about ticketing, I know about Active Directory, I know about Office 365. Let's talk about this story that they have built over here, right? So they, this kind of like balances out because I know the issue with a lot of us who have memory problems and stuff like that. And I myself have a, kind of like a, like a short memory problems. And I do have, to, to be honest, I, I do have. After my accidents, I had a, a C4 break, a collar break and, a, and spine. I, I broke both of these two. And after that, I'm, I feel like I'm not the same as I was before like, three, four years ago. So you think about it, all these situations matters, but the thing is that the way you sell yourself, then you counter these type of issues in interviews and it works for a lot of people. It may not work like all the time. Some people may be too hard on you. And that's where I tell people that, look, you got too much opportunities outside. You get rejected, take it, go back and go for a new job. That's the reality of the life. So, okay, uh, you guys may not believe it now, but all of the content you see Don is speaking about will become second nature to you in a year or two. So it's gonna take you a year or two, then make it a nature right now. <laughs> see how quickly you start learning. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's gonna take time. I agree with that. Anyways, guys, this is about, oh my God, this is, we started at eight and it's almost like 12, but it was an amazing session. 
I want a special uh, thank you to, uh, you know, Stephen, you're joining us the first time and, and all this information, the valuable information, please do join us in other sessions too. I would love to have you in our, our CavTech is always VIP. He's a, he's our, uh, what do you call that? Uh, Playboy or something like that? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> he's always a uh, thank you. And always thank you our members who are joining us with this late time, you guys are staying there, Jerry, uh, Leila, uh, Blanc Blanca, and uh, so many other people that join us. So, Sajib, so thank you so much. I hope you guys are learning from these things. I hope this is helping you. If you guys think that we are not performing well, let us know. We can make, we can always change our content. It's you know, very license. helpful. Thank you. Thank Donna, you so much. Donna, I think, I think, I think we're, we're too complicated. <laughs> And guys, the, the P, okay, here's the thing. I know when I, when I did this last time, there's something happened. There is no dislike today, but if you can still like my video, I will appreciate it. <laughs> last time when I say, please, uh, there's one dislike. I'm like, who the hell dislike my video? And then I got more dislikes. So I, you know, <laughs> so anyways, thank you so much. The people who are in the chat, special thank you to you, uh, especially WP and so many people who are always there and answering these questions, of course, because of you guys, um, this validate what we are talking about. We're not just making this up, by the way. We're not the first one to talk about these things. We're not even creating this stuff, by the way. We are just providing a platform, providing our knowledge to kind of make it just out there. That's it, that's what we're doing. Uh, we're not the first IT people, by the way, right? <laughs> there are too many professionals out there. So again, the people in the chat too, I really want to thank you. So session two, somebody just disliked, I know that's Kevin. That's not me. <laughs> I, got a, I got this software, it says Kevin just disliked you. It was <laughs> Okay, 45,000 people, I'm gonna throw on you right now. <laughs> <laughs> Whoever disliked my video, I still love you. <laughs> From bottom of my heart. So, so guys, uh, the thing is, is that session two, I will do it before Ramadan start because you can see this takes a lot of time and I will do it before the 23rd because that's where the fasting starts. So I will start to finish session two before that. So then we can get done with this software deployment side. And this video will be used kind of like in conjunction with software deployment with IT career questions because so valuable information out there. Any last questions before we go? And then, and then Donish will, Donish will be fasting. He'll, he'll come back half his size and he'll, we, we won't be able to recognize him. <laughs> we have to do this dance video at the end after Ramadan. We got to do a special dance. <laughs> oh, that's fine with me. <laughs> so thank you all. Uh, good night and take care of yourself. Be safe out there. And thank you all again to join the session. Take thanks, care. Thanks, Danish. Thanks, Kev Tech. Nice. And thanks, Stephen. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Good night. 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 Good night.